Hi, see that worked way better. We just have to use the <laughs> alphabet instead of counting when we start the show. Well, because you're late in fear of math. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong, Vale, and it's kind of a personal attack. It's, it's very hurtful. Um, <laughs> welcome to another episode of the Prismatic Dragonfly Tavern, uh, where I actually started without making horrible um, snorting and laughing sounds this time. So, um, But it's not too late for that. We got all night. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. This is going to be a very serious, somber episode, though, and I don't think there's any way that you all can make me laugh this time. So, that's not a challenge. By the way, um, I don't. Hmm, sorry, somebody messaged me saying there's a really good question. I got distracted. Um, I'll do another episode of Prismatic Dragonflight Tavern. Um, we now have Ray back with us this week, which we're incredibly excited about. Um, and we're going to go ahead and jump right in. So last week's episode was jam packed with action. And the party spent the entire episode in combat for the most part, fighting uh, a some sort of egg and barely came out victorious at the end, but they did a pretty good job of walloping this creature. Um, it was kind of the climactic moment after a couple of very fast-paced episodes of trying to figure out, chasing down multiple threads, trying to figure out what was going on in the city of Orishire. And um, we left last episode in the alley where they had just slain this hag, and the guard captain, Kovita Anna, and her guards had showed up. Um, the hag is dead over at one side of the alley. Everybody's kind of patching themselves up after the battle. Um, one of the denizens of the city that has been helping them, uh, to some degree, that they probably have some questions about, Matilda, uh, almost died. In fact, she did die at the end of this battle, but Gaspard somehow brought them back and changed forms. So there's, in short, what I'm trying to say is there's going to be a lot of questions this time. So we're going to pick up somewhat in that alley. So we left off with Kovita and her guards having shown up. They were starting to tend to people. She had just sent for um, priests or clerics to offer healing. Um, so the next, like, five to ten minutes is kind of just that weird blur with the ringing sound in your ears after combat. Uh, you're coming down off the adrenaline, some of you are pretty hurt, you're drinking healing potions, you're getting healing, you're reckoning with the fact of the types of magics and attacks that you just experienced either hitting you and or the ones that you had to release. And you have a lot of curious faces of the guards and people peering down the alley from the city now trying to get a look not only at you, but at the hag that's on the ground, too. So it, it's a lot, to say the least. But Kovita makes sure that nobody comes down the alley, and the guards are keeping everybody back, citizen-wise at least. And eventually she sends for a wagon and says what she said at the, the, the end of the last session, where she wants to get you all to the barracks or some secure place so you can talk about what happened. She has more details to share as well. So this is kind of just like... I should stop looking at my Discord because people are sending me very interesting questions um, about this game, so it's relevant. Um, so while this is all happening, because this is just kind of the blur after combat, everybody except Sonny give me a perception check. Twelve. <laughs> Guess fine. Natural one. Okay, so you see nothing. Twelve. I'm Nine. Nine. Where did Five. I go when I was teleported? <laughs> well, <laughs> these people. <laughs> you know, I think I have some things to be pondering on. Vaguely. No, you all, you all do legitimately. Um, so, half pipe. Um, as everybody's kind of going about tending to, to everything one would after battle, as the wagons coming down the alley, COVID is having them back it down, and it's a pretty big wagon. It looks like it has hay inside, but it also has this weird kind of black cloth covering on top of it, so it looks like it's mostly closed in, or can be closed in. Um, you just happen to, you know, you're looking around, and out of the corner of your eye, you catch Sonny still sitting on the ground with, like, the unconscious form of Matilda in her lap, and you see Matilda snap back to the blue Eladrin form that you met her in, and she stays like that for a good, like, three seconds, and then she snaps back to the form that you've seen her in for a little bit with no, like, no, nothing seems to influence it kind of thing. And you just catch it briefly out of the corner of your eye. Okay. But beyond that, it's pretty uneventful until the wagon gets there. Um, and then they bring the wagon all the way down 
to where the Hague is and stuff, and all of you are. Um, they've covered the Hague at this point. They said they're going to get rid of the body and kind of bring it in for examination. Um, but Kovita and her two guards that originally came down the alley are standing next to the wagon and just kind of gesture for everybody to get in and are waiting to see what you guys do. So that's kind of where we actually pick up with, you know, any questions that you have for them, any actions anybody's going to be doing. Um, the hag's body is covered. It's only guards, uh, two priests, Kovita. Sonny's still on the ground with Matilda unconscious in her lap, and that's kind of the scene. So everybody going to just hop in the wagon, or is anybody going to want to do anything specific before they move on. My Eldritch Cannon is still in existence and it's damaged already, so I'm just going to curb stomp it and take the pieces I can. <laughs> I don't like, know why. I don't know why I pictured that so beautifully, vividly in my head, <laughs> but I can just see how I like super nonchalant just walk over and bam! And then just ah, da, 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 as one of the guards is like... <laughs> Oh, these poor traumatized here. Oh, okay. Never. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't think these guards are thinking that right now. Cannon. <laughs> so yeah, you can definitely uh, salvage that. Anything else in the alley or while you're near the hag's body for the moment? Move the body. <laughs> Actually, Nobody did check that. the body for loot, but... <laughs> yeah, I would like to search the body. Okay. Um... For science and for, research. For science or research, okay. Yeah. We'll say that kind of happened before this point, just a little bit, but you can go look at the body. The guards aren't going to stop you or anything like that. Um, what are you looking for? Because it's a pretty grotesque body, especially how it was kind of split open as it fell. Are you looking to identify a specific piece? Are you truly looking for what people would define as loot or? I, I'm looking to see if there's like anything in its pockets, like, Besides, I don't know like, how remains? sentient. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how sentient hags are. So, like, are there letters or ruin stones or like magical items? Things of value. Yeah. Okay. How I would have done it. <laughs> Go uh, roll an investigation check for me. You'll find something regardless, or you'll find things regardless, but just the extent of your investigation. Using digital dice. Yes. Mm. I mm. forgot to grab mine out of the car. Mm. Eleven. Oh, oh, thank you. These usually serve me well. Um, eleven. Okay. So you can pull one of the kind of thick tarps up on the side of the hag and start looking. And within a minute or two, you come to a realization that this definitely was a person at some point. Because you find rings and you find bracelets. They're embedded in the flesh. Because it's like... They had rings, they had bracelets, they had a somewhat normal hand, however you define normal. But over time, the skin and the skin and the bones and the muscle and everything underneath swole so much that they became indented. And it's like the body expanded like a bloated carcass for some reason. And you can see a lot of obviously carved into their skin with some kind of a sharp implement runes that are now dark, but it reminds you specifically as somebody that grew up seeing a lot of different wildlife it makes you think of an animal that went insane sort of thing mm -hmm. just the state that the body is in and it's kind of sad really when you look over it because it you know who knows when they became a hag or anything like that or if they they started as a hag and they just slipped into madness because of a mistake they made but it's just a really interesting sight that you probably never thought you'd see but um as you keep looking doesn't really seem like this hag had pockets because it really was just like cloth wrapped around you do find i hesitate to call it a spell book because it's not a complete spell book but that's what it was at one point and you find a really rusty chain hanging around its side like kind of slung over its shoulder and there's tatters of what used to be a spell book there um you can easily detach it if you want it is uh probably like a quarter of a book with like pages of different sizes like fluttering from it it's black with beautiful gold symbols on the front of it and it looks like there might be some blood runes in there as well so yeah i'll take the spell book okay um in terms of the rings and bracelets are there like like are any of them a signet ring or a crest something that may lead to like the origin of this hag that's a really good question. Um, a lot of them are just decorative. There is one on her left pinky finger that has a small signet on it. It's really kind of hard to see. 
right now, but there is a signet there, so. I'm so sorry, I say to the dead body and I slice the finger off. Ooh. <laughs> Yay, easy enough. <laughs> so yeah, you slice that finger off and you have a hag finger with a bronze signet ring on it, so. I'll stick that in my pocket and get in the <laughs> that wagon. Sounds like a great idea. Now you're gonna smell yeah. like dead people. I mean, you we are. Smell like dead <laughs> the whole wagon's just gonna reek of dead. We're person. just perfume buddies. Oh Ooh. my god, dead people in fey blood. Yeah. So, the mood. <laughs> when you when you go get in um, the wagon, you see on the inside they do have some like really faint glowing um, lanterns that are obviously magical, not open flame inside, but it, it does look like it's completely enclosed or they can make it completely enclosed. So Cass goes in the wagon. Is anybody else going to do anything in the alley um, or investigate or anything before hopping inside? Matilda's in the wagon. No, Matilda, no, Matilda and Sonny are still sitting on the ground somewhat nearby. Like the, you've seen, so you've seen Kovita go over once and she had like a brief conversation and she actually on her crossbow um that she walked down the alley with she's got these little like holders on the side for potions and she popped off two red ones and handed them to sonny at one point um but sonny's just kind of been sitting there with with uh, unconscious matilda mm. and hasn't moved yet i'll go over to them mm -hmm. and i can carry matilda <laughs> thank you that'd be very helpful i'll scoop matilda mm -hmm. up um you try to pick Matilda up, and you do, but it's a, it's a bit of a surprising resistance at first as you go down and you, you pick her up, and she's very small and very light, but her arms are kind of like wrapped around Sonny's waist and they are exerting way more strength than an unconscious person should. <laughs> Make a uh, medicine check. Fifteen. So I would say, Vander, especially, you realize, like, you, you try to pick Matilda up out of Sonny's lap. You feel the resistance and kind of, you know, see that the arms are like this. You recognize that as a severe trauma response that, you know, she's latched on to, like, either she knows who she's latched on to or she just latched onto the first body that she could. And it's like a trauma response to how, you know, she died kind of thing. So you know how to, you know, gently pry her away and carry her away, but you have that knowledge. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Sonny sticks close regardless. So. Yeah, happily. Okay. So then, anything? Uh, no, I'll just like lag behind, but I'll eventually join. <laughs> okay. Are there any chunks of stone that like fell out into the street from the, the building that had like runes on them? Uh, ooh, good question. There's a chance, considering how far it was to the back. Yeah, just investigation or perception, technically. Okay. 11. 11? Yeah. Yeah, I would say that you can find one like the size size of a tennis ball kind of thing that just has some charred runes on it. Okay. Yeah. I put it in my bag. Okay. Then I go get inside. So one by one, you make your way into this wagon. It is filled with hay on the inside, but it's fresh hay, and it looks like they've tried to make it as comfortable as possible, and there are benches in there as well. And once everybody's inside, Kovita kind of pops her head in, double checks everybody, and without saying anything, just signals, and they close the flap on the back. Um, you can hear her go up to the front and hop on kind of a wooden bench with some of the other guards, and you set off at a, you know, slow pace. But once you get out of that alley, you hear a cacophony of people whispering, a couple people shouting, and there's a big crowd out there. Despite this being enclosed, you can also peek through the flaps if you want. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying, you can see slivers of light if anybody wants to look. Oh, I absolutely look. Okay. <laughs> we trust half pint to do that. <laughs> yep. So you peer out one of the flaps, and you see about 17 bodies of these cultists spread out around like the front of the bakery and you see a ridiculous amount of guards probably like 35 or so guards in different state of like some have their helmets off some have breastplates off some of them are obviously injured it looks like one might be dead and there are people everywhere kept at a distance but everywhere around the collapse building and they are having to like clear the crowd just to get the slow moving wagon to go so it was a battle out front with these cultists um and they had losses on both sides, and there's plenty of people wondering what the hell are going on. So you make a perception check just because you stuck your head out. 23. Nice. 
So you hear you hear a lot because people are just whispering and you know can't control their voices in general. And some of the things you pick up are the rumor that it's a hag has definitely spread. There's also a rumor that it was Edwin for some reason, even though that makes no sense. There's a rumor that it was the Haven, <laughs> that it was somebody from the Haven Snouts family. Um, and there's a you know a bunch of other ones, but those are kind of the ones that stick out to you. Um, a lot of people are wondering who was in the alley. And they want to know, like, their names kind of thing. So a lot of people are like, who was that? That wasn't the guards. You know, a lot a lot of stuff like that. So. I resist the urge to start shouting all of our names at the people. And then I go back. <laughs> That's what I thought that <laughs> nice girl was for. <laughs> Cass, did you have something? Uh, more like... Cass would be going back and forth between, like, staring at her boots and then, like, looking at Cass Spark and going back. It's like, are you going to murder us? <laughs> no, I've, I've since figured out he, he, they're probably not going to murder us. <laughs> so do you still go by Cass Spark? Is that your preferred name? Like, are we good with that? <laughs> or would you prefer something else? Cat Spark, perhaps. I, I mean, I'm Gaspard. Vrici. Okay. Are you still technically an intern? I don't think they're an intern. Are you not an intern? I'm He's. Always... They're still an intern, yes. Maybe we should have some of these conversations when the guards are done with us. It's fair. It's fair. Yeah, we probably don't want to alert them that we're keeping someone here and not paying them. Good Good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Very strict labor of laws in Orshire. You never know. <laughs> Uh, out of, sorry, out of curiosity, Ray, did you put Matilda on, in, like, somewhere in the wagon on the hay? Were you still holding them? What did you do with them? I would say it's probably more comfortable just to be holding her still. Mm -hmm. Okay. Easy peasy. All Mark right. Said, Sonny's just glued to her side. For sure. Mm -hmm. So you guys are going to be in the wagon for about 30 minutes or so, and it's an easygoing ride going through the city. Um, the clamoring and the noise outside never seems to stop no matter where you go though so news is definitely spread um as you get further away though the main thing that you all can hear trickling inside from the outside along with like who was that what happened you know the common things people ask a lot of people are wondering if they've been poisoned from eating at the invisible vial and the other one is everybody's trying to figure out what the hell the octopus was that appeared in the sky. <laughs> and there's a multitude of names floating around for it so far, but people are really trying to figure out what that omen was. So It's a real shame. I kind of liked this place, but um, probably not going to be able to stay here very long. <laughs> Why not? We just saved them from a... We just saved them. True. We also demolished a building in the middle of their town, and there's a bunch of random cultists. You don't think they're going to blame us? We demolished a building that was feeding them dead people. They don't know that. We do a publicity this is campaign. To talk to <laughs> Presumably, this is why Muscovita wants to speak with us. Hmm. Yes, well, we'll answer her questions and then decide what to do next. Mm hmm. All right. So eventually you hear the sound, the very, you know, almost at this point comforting sound, because it's been going for 30 minutes or so, of the wheels clacking against cobblestone change to wheels clacking against wood. And Kovita pops her head in through uh, the curtain that's up by the driver's area, and she, like, pops her head in, and you just see the cloud of, like, gray hair wispy all over the place because she's taken her ponytail out. And she just glances at each one of you, like, making sure everybody's still okay. We will be there in just a minute. So, uh, is everyone still all right? Yes, thank you. Okay, just a few more minutes. I'm sorry for the long journey. And she pulls her head back out. And you start to hear the sound of waves around you as well. Or water, not full-on waves, obviously. But you can tell that you're near the docks or on the docks. Um, five, or, five to ten minutes later, it's kind of tough, but five, we'll say five minutes later. Um, you slow to a halt. You hear the drivers disembark. And then Kovita and the guards throw open the back of the wagon. And 
you're in a very impressive, beautiful courtyard that seems to be out on the dock area or an area of the docks that you haven't been to before. So the first thing that's noticeable as your eyes adjust to the sun is the beautiful white cobblestone in front of the wagon, or well, you're looking out the back, so behind the wagon. You see a set of gates with beautiful gold arches on them, and then you see what starts as a very pretty, like polished wood um, pier that turns into rickety boards eventually that connects to the shoreline. And you're about 800 feet from the shore on some kind of, you know, like mini island, not really an island when it's in, in this shallow of a bay, but you're out there. And it looks way more like a residence than a barracks, but you see guards standing at the gate, up in the like the the wall around it and Kovita's standing there she her crossbow's gone she's taken off her breastplate and some of the heavier armor her hair's all frizzy um and she just like looks up at all of you knocks the the ramp down and and beckons for everybody to come down okay um we can go first oh, okay i'll carry matilda out okay all right so as you step out it's Part of the reason it's it's taking your eyes a bit to adjust here is the whole place is made of really polished stones and woods, and they're all bright colors, so the sun is very reflective here at this time of day. But as the two of you step out, you truly are in a barracks slash guard, um, guard keep, but it does look like you're at a mansion or a former mansion for some reason. So it looks like a stables was added. It looks like landscaping has been ripped out, some of it, at least um, a lot of pieces have been kept, but it's a very large, um, beautiful estate. It's got the main gate, no other entrances to it. You see some small like rowboats outside. It does have a, a heavy uh, iron gate that can close down um, if they so choose. And there's probably at least a hundred guards just scattered all over the place. Uh, in front of the wagon is a massive mansion that looks like it has been there forever, meticulously kept though. Um, beautiful stained glass windows with red and yellow and orange in every window. The whole thing is made of very like reddish polished wood with like accents of black and silver. And it's just, it's a very beautiful building, but all you see is guards everywhere. So as you start to, to walk out, Kovita is specifically eyeing the person in your arms, like slit eyes, just glaring at her almost. But as soon as you get out, like all the way she stops and shakes her head a little bit. There is um, food, and I think you are all mostly stabilized, but we have medical care as well if you need. I think you all probably need a good meal in you and perhaps some sleep before we talk, because I have a lot of questions and I don't want to overwhelm you after the amazing feat that you have performed. Um, so, and she kind of like leans around you too and looks into the wagon as well. If you all want to come with me, I'll make sure that you get food and we have some rooms that you can take as well. And after you've all rested a bit, we can begin kind of talking about what happened back there. All right. Is this the safest place to be? How long uh, have you been here? It stationed. Oh, in this facility? Uh, the low steel mansion, I'm assuming? Uh, yes, we've been here uh, 30 years or so. It's very safe. It's, I would say it's probably one of the most safest places in the city. Not that it's, it's defensible, okay. but we have very good wards here, not to mention the core of our forces. Why, are you concerned about the Hague or something else? <laughs> Is this a prison? Are we under arrest? Does this look like a prison? It could be. I don't know. Is there like a deep dark cellar that you're going to slam us into? I mean, I'm from Treetop. We don't have places like this. I didn't do I, anything worth getting arrested over. That is, I don't know. That... You did commit a crime. I did not commit a crime. No crimes were committed. <laughs> they're overcomplicating it. They're very, they're, they're over worried. Mm, I think that's just guess parts. So. I, that is one of the reasons I want you to rest and eat because I want you to be in your best state so we can have a conversation and figure out what happened. Um, that's understandable. And yes, we do have cells here. Obviously, they are not underneath this. We are on water. Well, land, whatever. No, you are not under arrest. You technically can leave if you want. I would caution you against it because the entire city wants to know who you are and has questions for you. You're not in the best state to be walking around just talking about health in general. 
and we honestly could use your help and owe you some thanks uh, for what you have done for Orashire as well. Sure. But you can leave if you so ch choose. I am not holding you. I have not placed you under arrest for any reason. Thank you. Um, Sonny, should we get a room first? Or until we... That's a good idea. Oh, Anastasia. Mm -hmm. Oh, Anastasia. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm using Matilda's name. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, can we get a room for Anastasia? First? Uh, yes, we have um, we have a, a a section of rooms for dignitaries and visiting families and anyone that isn't stationed here. Uh, we have about ten of them, so you can split them up among yourselves however you want. You can use one, multiple. I I do not care. Uh, we have a mess hall where you can grab food, or I would have the guards bring you food if that would be less traumatic right now or allow you to sleep more quickly. That would probably be best for Anastasia. Of course. And she pops out a, uh, she reaches into one of her bags and pulls out a, a, a giant key ring. All these keys are brand new. Some of them even have gems in them and it looks way showy on purpose. And she just reaches over and hands it to Cass. These are the keys to the tin rooms. If you look over there, and she indicates like past this set of stables, it was obviously like some stables they put on a wagon, rolled in piece by piece, and rebuilt these stables that don't match the rest of the place. You see um, a section of wooden doors that just face the courtyard, and it's obvious they're really easily accessible quarters that were designed for guests. As I said, they are all clean you can take any of them that you wish and i can have the guards bring a selection of food to the rooms that you choose just leave the doors open a crack and they'll bring some food in a bit obviously guards are stationed everywhere here i am going to station them outside those rooms for your own safety you can leave etc just trying to help thank you of course yes thank you very much I'll you, follow you too. You all noticed, by the way, like, uh, I know we saw Kovita once. I don't know how much of a description I gave, but Kovita is definitely in her upper 70s. She has very sun-worn skin, weather-worn skin, um, really kind of bright blue eyes still, and then just a crazy mane of gray hair. Definitely looks like she has her scare share of scars on her face and her body as well. And she could be someone's grandmother, except she still is in the, the shape where she can be a guard captain. So definitely has the motherly side of her, it looks like, um, even though you've just seen the suspicious, harder side so far, especially certain people. <laughs> um, are there sconces on the wall as we're being toured through the, the mansion? Say what? Are there like sconces on the wall? And yeah. Stuff? Um, anytime I, uh, Gaspard feels like no one's looking, they're just going to gently tug on like every <laughs> single sconce they can. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Someone's good. been reading too many plays. <laughs> nope. Make, a, make a, a stealth check, just for funsies. <laughs> just for funsies. Not like you're going to hey. get in trouble. Uh, that'd be a 17. Okay. Yeah, you're able to, to, to tag a couple of them as you walk around. So is everybody headed to the rooms then? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. What kind of split are you guys doing? Are you just going to like go, all go in one and eat? Or are you going to well, go to bed? Or what, what are you thinking? I think I would... So I think... I think our friend needs her... Anastasia needs her own bed. Mm -hmm. um so i don't know if sonny wants to stay with her i would say so uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um and then if you need someone in the room with you to protect you i am more than willing to be the giant thing in some in the way yeah protect your best friend yeah <laughs> <Correct>. I... <laughs> I think i just need food and a nap um, frankly I'll, I'll take my own room okay then okay. i will sleep in my own room okay mm -hmm. so single room single room with anastasia what about you two I'm fine alone or a double. Yeah. Um, or do you want uh, me with you? I think we'll be fine. Yeah, that's going to be my question is, did you want someone to also help you watch? Because I'll happily do it. Well, we have guards to keep watch. You should just go to sleep. Yeah, as you walk over, I mean, not mm -hmm. only is this a very staff keep is the best way to, to term it, but where you're headed, there's already three guards, one at each end and one in the mm -hmm. middle. And they seem very, like, not, not on alarm, but they are fully armed and, you know, suited up. Yeah, more like bedside visual, visual mm -hmm. yes. than yes. Mm -hmm. protection. But... I, I oh, right, I the hog. Stay... What's up? Well, the hog's dead. Can't eat anymore of mm -hmm. Gaspar's dreams. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't think I can stay awake much longer, so if you wanted to keep an eye out, I would not be opposed. I'm happy too, unless you'd like to. I'd 
be very down for that and you were you got hit hard oh i feel fine that is really good <laughs> um i owe it to her <laughs> yeah no you go ahead. i i i i hurt oh god you go rest then yeah i'm gonna give like Anastasia head scratches and then just walk <laughs> into my room, into a separate room and just fall asleep instantly. So note about that. As you reach over and scritch, scritch her hair, you do feel the distinct texture of hair, like individual strands, but there is still that weird texture to it that shouldn't be there for someone's hair. And it's like she has a lot of, I'm going to use earth terms. It's, um, it's like she has too much product in her hair. And it's a little damp, but when you pull your fingers away, there's no residue. But it just strikes you as odd. But you kind of felt that when you did the lay on hands and stuff. But it's still clinging to her form for some reason. But yeah, you can go into one of the other rooms and pass out. Each room has two king-size beds in it. Um, there's nightstands, there's wash basins, there's baths in all of them. And they're, they're kind of sparse. They are, they're, they're furnished, but obviously they expect somebody with a lot of stuff to move in and stay for some time. So there's like closets in there that are empty except hangers and everything. But Paintings on the wall? No. Okay. No paintings on the wall. Very, very bare other down. than those. Yeah. <laughs> um, and to answer your question, just so I don't have to squint and like type at Discord, you do. Cool. Um, nobody's realized though. Um, <laughs> not to, you know, make them suspicious and get smarter. I yeah, suddenly can't fall asleep again. <laughs> I feel like I'm forgetting something. Did I leave the oven on? Did I leave the oven on? <laughs> All right, so cast, you go to bed. Um, half pint and Gaspard in your individual rooms. You're also going to, well, you're going to wait for food, right? Or are you going to go to bed? You can do either. They'll drop the food off either way. Yeah, I would probably eat. Okay. Yeah, I definitely eat. Okay. And you just went to sleep, right? More like, yeah, like, I dropped into that elven trance and was just like, I've checked out. Thank you. Bye. Okay. <laughs> okay. So um, that leaves us with the trio. So mm -hmm. Sonny, Anastasia, and Vander, you all go into the room. What do you do? Um, I set Anas Anastasia down mm -hmm. on one of the beds, tuck right. her in, make sure she's comfortable. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I'll just um, sort of keep watch, wait for food in okay. like a chair or something. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, you're not really tired at this point. You're no. feeling good from yeah, that potion. Well, only a few people didn't sleep. Yeah. Huh? And Sonny just kind of like sits down in a chair for a second and kind of collects herself and keeps just kind of keeps an eye on Matilda and makes sure she's, you know, resting comfortably. Mm -hmm. And then eventually just gets in the bed as well and falls asleep. <laughs> gets in the bed with her and falls mm -hmm. asleep? Okay. So the guards are by about 15 minutes later and they have these really beat up banged up like platters that are definitely not the finest silverware but they're loaded with food and drink um and it's you know really hearty stuff it's not like anything that you're going to find at a, at a um, banquet but it's probably really good for you guys right now so there's you know there's bread there's potatoes there's meat um there's some kind of a really like low alcohol wine and just a ton of water and they also have a really like sweet cakey tart on there for everybody so plenty of food delivered to all the rooms um and then the guards are, you know, they'll they'll just pretty much show up, knock, give you the food, and like try to give you your your privacy and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, you have the rooms to yourself, so everybody can go ahead and take a long rest if you'd like, if you want to sleep that long, because nobody's going to in intrude until well after a long rest. So we're going to be well into the evening by the time that you. It's probably going to be about nine o'clock by the time you all would start rousing and waking up. Those of you that are not elves. <laughs> Yeah, um, I'll be in my trance for five hours. For oh, really, really sleeping in. <laughs> really sleeping in for that. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I'll just take a short rest, get my key points back. Okay, cool. So yeah, please mark all that down. Um, that penalty I have is that gone if I do a full rest? Yes. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. If you if if anybody has any penalties or anything else like that, they're going to reset right now. I don't think there's anything else that we're really tracking that needed this for a reset. But yes, yours yours goes away. Um, Cass, when you fall asleep, well, sorry, when you enter your trance, you enter your trance successfully and you are able to stay in the trance and gain the full benefit of the trance. That is not taken from you. But in the trance, typically it is a trance and you do not have 
you know, specific thoughts. They, they, thoughts come, you acknowledge them, they leave. It's very much like meditation. And a lot of the time when you come out of your trance, in fact, most of the time, you don't usually take memories away from your trance, unless like someone was being very loud and disruptive near you kind of thing, and that might leave an imprint. Mm -hmm. But you experience a lot of strange, unexplained flashes of Matilda, Anastasia, whatever the hell she is, and you just get all these really like bright images, violent images of what could be her life, what could be a vision, and you distinctly see her a couple other times in her life doing that move where with some unexplained magic she's able to rip a spear out of her body and do something with it. And she never died from it. She was probably in better health every time, but you get some of those spotty memories from the from the resource that you were given. Um, yes, Bard. Likewise, when you fall asleep, you get everything that you were given uh, off camera as well with kind of the memories flooding in. It's not violent. It's nothing like when the hag um, was in your dreams. It is very much like a series of dreams, but it all spawns from the distinct image of you shoving your hand in their back, and then you just go on that roller coaster of dreams kind of thing. But you still get the long rest and everything. It's It's very intense, but not like disruptive or painful or anything like that. Um, Sonny, you go black. You just pass out and mm -hmm. you have no dreams. You have Hi. nothing. No, it, I think Sonny's gotten like an hour of sleep in the last 36. So yep. no, she's just passing. The yep. yep. It's yeah. Son Sonny gets some of that amazing undignified sleep. We all really seek where you're just like, <laughs> and it's, you know, it's the most restful sleep that you've ever had in your life kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, so about eight and a half, nine hours later, everybody except Cass, who has been up for a little bit, will begin to rouse. During the time that you're up and nobody else is going to be up, anything specific that you want to do? Because um, you have a chunk of time where you're going to be by yourself, technically. Yeah, I think I'm going to eat dinner. And then I am going to better dissect the ring out of the hag finger and properly dispose of it. <laughs> um, it's important to have a hobby. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I don't want to carry around. You're using the same, you just like, I'm just picturing you tell me how, how it happened, but I'm like picturing Cass eating dinner and then like looking at the utensils and then looking at the finger and then using those to dissect it or what uh, are you using? You know, as a, as a, um, a former aspiring druid, I think I have proper like hunter's knife. Okay. To do this. Okay, okay. And, so I'm not. So you bust out the hunters. Hunters. Yeah, uh, I'm not okay. using the dull butter knife. I'm just. I'm it's not really steak knife. That would be yeah. barbaric. I'm just double checking. And would be rude to the chef, who <laughs> does not consent to oh ha to hag flesh. Yes. <laughs> um. So uh, yeah, no, I'm I'm doing that and just like you know slowly making my slices to pull it off neatly. Okay. <laughs> so. It's actually not that hard because you, as you begin to cut thinking, you know, oh God, this is going to have to be like, you know, taking an animal apart kind of thing, even though it's just a finger, it's, you know, you're going to have to cut through bones and you, stuff like that. It's actually really easy because it feels like the finger's beginning to just disintegrate and, and bits of it are already just turning into a dust-like substance. I run oh. out and like <laughs> let it blow in the wind. And you see one of the guards be like, this is fun. It's normal. It's life. <laughs> she just slams the door. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, you're able to get the ring. Uh, the ring, you know, easily would fit on one of your fingers. It's a standard size ring. It's a bronze that has definitely gained that green tinge to it over time. But you have a clear view of the crest now. Um, it's not a crest that you personally have seen before. It's a very beautiful crest. It has... Sorry, let me bring the image up, which I should have already brought up. Uh, it has two waves that are smashing together with a trident between them, and there's a set of mountains in the background. Looks like there used to be more detail in the foreground, but it's kind of rubbed off over time and it's chipped and stuff like that. But definitely looks like a family crest, just based on the composition and the detail. All right. Anything else? After you take your notes. No, I think I'm just going to sit there and process. <laughs> oh, okay. God. Sorry. You're fine. <laughs> You're all... hold my you are all good, right? <laughs> Um, okay, so just going to process till everybody else gets up? Yeah. Okay. So, at about 
like we have a Discord interaction. Oh, we have a Discord interaction. Oh, do we now? Um, stand by. <laughs> All of we what? Why do we need to hydrate? We always need to hydrate. <laughs> to stay hydrated. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, hey, did somebody redeem points to make us drink? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you because I am severely dehydrated most of the time, so I need that reminder. So. <laughs> Who redeemed this? Oh, again? <laughs> it's Ray. Everybody needs to drink more to cover the back of chip. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Ray. <laughs> Making sure my, my that was the last swig of my drink, but thank you. I'm slightly more hydrated now. Um, <laughs> that was wonderful. Uh, so in about eight and a half hours since you guys went out, a, one of the guards like gently knocks on all the doors until he gets some kind of an answer from within and doesn't open it or anything. I assume most of you locked them anyway, but they just announced um, COVID is going to be here in about half an hour. Just wanted to make sure you were up and ready for her and just kind of a generic announcement to Mm -hmm. all of the occupied rooms so that is what wakes everybody except Cass up and it's up to you all i'll make some tea Good idea. There, there's a very basic kind of like cook cooking setup in there like a wood uh it's just a wood stove but you can use that to make some tea cool all right so once vander is up and making tea like sonny kind of just takes a minute to fully wake up and then just checks on matilda <laughs> so thankfully you got solid sleep so finally starting to feel a little bit like yourself matilda is still passed out still pretty much the same that you left her when you originally when you originally got there mm -hmm. so she's curled up into kind of a, a really small ball uh underneath the sheets where vander left her and she's otherwise exactly the same her breathing's a little bit better now um you specifically because you had heard it before from holding her for so long you still still hear that watery like rattle when she breathes like at the tail end of it like there's something in her lungs but it's it's much better now mm -hmm. um but she's still she's still sleeping okay. would you like me to take a look at her if you don't mind i'll use my limited knowledge of medicine and my more expanded knowledge on Faye. <laughs> okay. So check her out. Okay, go for it. Do a medicine check. Well, and I would say actually a medicine check with advantage because of the Faye nature of it. Sure. Oh, her second appendix. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, 14. Okay. Um, so you'll, you pull the covers back and, and start to kind of look over and you do the standard, you know, checking for a pulse, checking for everything. <laughs> More water. <laughs> water was magically delivered to me. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I love you Go all. Go tech team. Uh, tech and hydration team. So. Oh, God, that's ice cold, too. That's amazing. <laughs> I am so dehydrated. Um, <laughs> so you pull the blankets down. Um, Matilda's still wearing Sonny's, like the outfit you're used to seeing Sonny in. There is a hole ripped kind of right here in her chest, like on the sternum area. That's sternum technically, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and you see a very dark, very fresh bruise where she drew the spear, uh, spear from. And then you kind of go through your normal checks. Breathing, decent heart rate, like all the vitals seem okay. You immediately pick up on the, like the weird breathing sound, which concerns you a little bit because that does typically indicate liquid in the lungs kind of thing. Um, but you're also... The next steps that you would go through are kind of reaching out with just your inherent magic and kind of seeing what the life force is looking like for this individual. Which is the first thing that really is going to stand out to you. Because to you, Fae all appear one specific way. And I'm not here to tell you how they appear, but they appear as a specific color, a specific vibration, a specific shape. Like, a Fae is a Fae to you, and they have this really bright, beautiful energy. Matilda is giving off that energy, but it's twisting around and it's gray. And I don't know yet with Vander's life if Vander would ever have actually encountered what this is, but could you make just a history roll for me to you see bet. it? Either encountered it or read about it kind of thing, just to give me a basis. 12. 12? Okay. You've, you've heard of possible corruptions that can happen to Faye that might do something to this, or at least you can theorize that it might do something. You've heard of corrupted Faye. But yeah, it's the first time Vander's really seen this kind of 
twisted like darkness almost to the energy. But beyond that, it seems like this is just a sleeping fae right now. Um, you are able to get a really close look at like the, the strange skin. It's a little translucent and like tacky in places. The, the weird sort of hair, the ivory horns. Um, her eyes are closed, so you can't really see her eyes, but you see the little black freckles. Um, so you get a really good close look at her and you get a lot of information, but that's, that's the big thing that sticks out. Oh, sorry. Beyond that, she's also way smaller than she was before. She, Matilda's typically like 6'2", and like athletic build, she's smaller than Sonny now. Like 5'1", five, 5'2", five five maybe probably 5'1", mm -hmm. and her body mass has decreased. Mm. So. Um, do I know what might fix fey corruption? From what you know, there's not really anything to be done what you see when you're when you're looking at a fey like this is their true life force. It's not really anything for you to do anything to. It's more of how are they doing? This is kind of a readout on their mental state. Your master, your ma your master. It's more of a readout on their soul. Sorry, your your master would have like taught you how to do this sort of thing, and every being has a different one. For fey though, it's really bright, and you get a lot of detail from the fey. Uh, any fae that you look at like this. So it's not so much, there's not a way to fix this corruption or do anything about it. It's more that you're just seeing it right now. But from a medical side of things and from a fae side of things, your best guess is that she just needs more rest because you're not seeing anything that you could really do healing-wise. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll relay this information to you as best as I can. Okay. Sonny does not seem surprised about the corruption thing. It's like, mm, that, that was already there. What do you mean? It's... Her secrets are hers to tell, but th that's not new. Oh, okay. So this isn't, like, dangerous or scary or... It's sort of... I mean, it's... It's not new. Okay. Do you know how to fix it? I don't think it's really a fixed thing. It's just how she is. Okay. I'll give you some tea. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Maybe you should give some to the others. Oh, I'll go out and offer everyone some tea. Vander's tea service. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so minutes later, after the guard comes around, you have a <laughs> very jovial, bouncing almost in some ways, um, Herbod come to your door with tea. So uh, I. We didn't assign order, so I'm just going to kind of go around the table. So I'm going to say that Vander encounters Caspers. Hello. Good morning. Good morning, Kendall. Oh my god, yes. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, as you say good morning, the stars are out because it's like nine, but nine at night. <laughs> yeah, <I think> <laughs> the, fight took, the fight took place around noon, so. <laughs> oh, good afternoon. <laughs> yes, good evening. <laughs> This is a good evening tea. <laughs> Did you sleep all right? And how's Anastasia and Sonny? They're both doing all right. A little worried about Anastasia, but I think she'll do okay. Cool. Well, that that's good. I'm glad both of them are all right. I'm headed to uh, Half Pint and Gaspar next, if you'd like to come. So we can all reconvene and speak to the captain. Yeah, I think I'll go on ahead to Gaspard. I want to check in on them. Okay. But, uh, yeah. Sounds good. Okay. So, um, we'll resolve that in a minute. Yeah. Cass can go off to Sonny and uh, Anastasia's room. And then next would be half fine. <gasps> knock, knock. I open the door very slowly and peek out. <laughs> I have tea for you if you'd like some. Absolutely not. Oh. No, it's too, it's too early. It's I... nine in the afternoon. Nope. I nope. have alcohol. I come out. <laughs> <laughs> I was promised alcohol. I take you the, the fermented alcohol. tea. Yeah. Fermented. I have a fermented and then I have chamomile. Yeah, fermented only, please. <laughs> so, See, I know you like alcohol. So. Well, I don't like it so much as I'm not allowed to have it. So while I'm gone, I'm going to drink as much of it as I possibly can. I'll enable you. <laughs> <laughs> The furblog monk is enabling people. I love this. I love this. <laughs> Did you say it was fermented? Do you have kombucha? Is that what you have with kombucha? <laughs> okay. You have, you have, okay, a new thing for me to work into the world. You have kombucha. <laughs> so it does have a nice alcoholic kick to it. All right. Gaspard. 
and then uh, knock, knock, knock. What do we do? <laughs> uh, we drink tea. <laughs> Bender has alcoholic tea too. Yes. Would you like some? No. <laughs> um. Like thirty minutes. Relax. Relax. We're all reconvening together so we can speak to the captain about what happened. What happened? <laughs> Uh, we solved the issue of the invisible stalkers that were going to kill people by narrowing down the target and the group, at least mostly. I'm sure there's still cultists about, but we handled the bigger threat at the moment, which is the hag. I think mostly you need to worry about explaining your kind of change in appearance. If they ask. If they ask. But honestly, I don't... There's because, no problem. Yeah, and I think the story is just that you had a hag at your dreams, and then we were we were we were out for blood. So yeah, yes, we simply got revenge. That's yeah. a thing that people do in towns. That's, we um... definitely didn't dispel magic <laughs> in a very populated area. Yeah, that just happened. That uh, was just. I'm not the one with the wand. <laughs> right? <laughs> no, you're not. Sonny technically has it. Um. Yes, what are, what, are, what, are, what are we doing? Are we convening? Are we meeting them all together? Are we, are we talking first? Are you can we... see lights on from all the rooms and the doors are slightly open. Like, everybody's been moving around and talking. We so. can all talk together first and before we see the captain. See, so we it's... talk about the stuff the guards are yeah, interested there. in. <laughs> I thought you went to see Sonny and Matilda. Yeah, I said I was going to go speak to Gaspard. Oh, first. sorry. I thought you yes, went to sorry. my bad. I thought you had gone to Sonny and, and Matilda. That's why I said we'd resolve that. I didn't realize that you went there with them. My bad. Actually, while she went first, mm. you went first. Yeah. Okay. Then I say all that to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We don't panic. Um, we tell the guards what they need to know. And then we can deal with our interpersonal shit. <laughs> so we have so many questions for each other, but I don't think the guards need to know about 90% of it, if any of it. You're right, yes. Is orange really your color? I mean, frankly, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I like orange. I think it's a very nice color. No, it's great. I'm just saying that it's just, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, it's just like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> Hey, hey. Considering Half Pine's room was right next to, you know, guest parts yeah. too, you're all hearing this and are involved yeah. too, so. Hey, I said you're going to be fine. Mm, that's not true. So and you're sure. fine. I'm fine. Yeah. So, we're going to continue to be fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Sure. We're still buddies. Well, not best not. friends. No, I'm just saying, like, nothing's changed. Okay. Like, I'm not going to infringe on Half Pine's territories. Best yeah, friends, that's my best like, friend. You stay away from yeah, me. Yeah, but we're buddies. <laughs> you stay away from you stay away from Gaspard. Yeah, my Gaspard. I my best back. friend. Huh. Second best friend. Sorry, Gaspard. I'm going to die. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, yeah, but I think impose themselves. Gaspard still looks normal, right? Like it, right now, Gaspard looks like Gaspard, the Gaspard you've always known. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Immaculate, not wearing armor, but like the mustache is curled to perfection. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yeah. Shall we reconvene or convene all together at Sony's? Yep. We'll head to Sony. Okay, cool. Um, the brief while that they were gone, there's no change in Matilda, but is there anything that you wanted to do while you were alone? No, she mostly is just keeping an eye out. I don't think she really has a whole lot she needs to do <laughs> okay. other than maybe just kind of pray and organize her thoughts a little bit okay um are you leaving her on the bed are you staying next to her are you moving around I, the I room think she's just kind of sitting on the edge of the bed for now okay cool so when you all get back a few minutes later that's what you walk in on sonny just kind of sitting on the edge of the bed uh, matilda is still underneath the blankets um in her strange form and you're all finally back together and you still have at least 30 minutes or so till Kokita shows up so you have time don't feel rushed I'll divvy out some more tea. Oh, alcoholic and not alcohol. alcoholic. Correct. Oh, this is a very helpful time for thank you. Of course. What should we talk to the guard captain about? Like, is there anything we should leave mm -hmm. out or I mean, mention? It sounds like she has some questions already, so I suppose we just have to see what she wants mm -hmm. to ask about. I guess mm -hmm. most of it's pretty obvious. They're going to be requisitions. I think we'll be just fine. 
are going to be, you know, ordered. The low steel family is helping, hurting our shire, they're plotting. You need to stop this, you sept in it, uh, you know, things like that. I don't think they're the type that would make us. Uh, well, if they try, I can just get money involved, it'll be fine. On a positive note, they do want to reward us for our assistance in the matter, and I know you all want a vote. You could ask for a boat. It's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A boat would be nice. <sighs> but also, like, eating dead people is kind of an affront to life. So I would like to get to the bottom of this and make sure that Dwarf Man is brought to justice. I have one request. We do not bring Gnome Lady into it because she was very helpful. And also, I would like a description of Dwarf Man because I looked at him and I don't remember his face, but now I know something was up. Did anyone else see that dwarf? Well, he was part of the town, so Kofita better be able to get somebody to draw me that face. Was it the fellow that was selling the tankards? I think that was a dwarf? No, it, no. That was a dwarf, but it was the not, not this one. Okay. Uh, thank you. Absconded anyway. Yeah, that's so. what she said, but I want to know what he looks like. Okay. Well, I think the guards were like helping him out, being like, oh my god, this is such a horrible thing that has happened. Like, let us get you to safety. And I think he has run away. Mm -hmm. So they, sh they should know him. Mm -hmm. But yeah. You all kind of have the realization as you're sitting, standing, you know, where everybody, everybody's going to find comfort in this room with the door closed and the guards outside. This is the first time you've all been quietly together in a place in a little bit. So we'll take as much time here as we need for any conversations or just rest if, if, if everybody needs. But you have, you have some space and privacy for once. And even if you don't do anything dramatic with it or we end, it, we end on that note and get, go get to Kovita, it is nice. Mm -hmm. You all, you know, there's no sound of magic thrumming around you there's no sound of fighting there's no immediate thing that you have to do no impending doom and you all had eight hours and sometimes a little bit more of sleep and your stomachs are full and you have delicious tea so mm -hmm. despite the amazing stress that you're under you do have that cass you understand runes right ish i take the like block of rune that was that I took from the site and just hand it to Cass. Do you know what this is? Do I know what this rune is? Runes in general are kind of like languages and just by looking at them, you can kind of get, you know, the feel for them. You think you know what they are, but they're really old. They do remind you of something from Treetop specifically though. So roll a history check for me. You should use real dice. Why? Because I'm betting the digital dice just rolled a one. 18. Okay, dang it. <laughs> thought I could call that. No, uh -huh. no, could not call that one. So, the runes don't say anything because they're an enchantment. The enchantment is an offensive enchantment that has the effect of making the weapon far sharper than it should ever actually be and giving it the ability to penetrate magical defenses. It's a very old version of said rune and it's something very specific to the border guards at tree top. More like a history way though, runes have been improved since then and it's a pretty crass rune to be honest. I mean, it's kind of an old model, but it, it it's still an checks, rune out. That checks out. Yeah. <laughs> I take the rune, I take the long sword out of my bag that I've just like the that's just been sitting there. Uh, and I'm looking at these runes and trying to decide if they're if they're like matchy matchy friends. Like if they belong to the same kind of like family of, of stuff. Oh, okay. Um, it, immediately it's obvious that they're not. Like the, the, the sword is elegant, even though it's an older design. The ones that you're looking at look once again as if like a toddler grabbed the knife and like etched them into wood kind of thing. Um, <laughs> the half pint might kind of. You're not going to recognize them, but you've seen weirdly like rough scratch runes like this in some of your father's research, and it's just a specific branch of magic. Okay. So, cool. I have a bunch of runes I can't do anything with. I put them back in my bag. Okay. Cool. I mean, you could probably somehow take that one and turn it into like some really cool magical weapon, or like reform it into a magical weapon. It it makes things pointier. It makes them be able to break through magical defenses. I might be able to. I might be able to use this on the bullets for my gun. 
that would be super cool. Hmm. So question, where's Gaspard in the room? Uh, if there's a window, Gaspard's just like looking out it. Okay. Sonia's actually going to get up and walk over to Gaspard. Are you doing okay? Uh, yes, no, never better. How are you holding up? Better than I could have been. I... Yes. I might want to thank you, actually. Oh, no thanks necessary. Um, or debt repaid. I, look, I don't understand what you did or what was happening there exactly, but I, I know you did something and she would probably be dead otherwise. And thank you. Yes, no, it's um, happy to help. <laughs> You're a good person, Gaspar. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yes, no, we all did good. We saved the day. Frankly, we're all... Well, on an ethics scale, I'd say we're all doing immensely better than a couple of days ago. <laughs> <laughs> what? what happened a couple of days ago? Uh, I don't want to think about that. Yeah, well, Took we'll... a job, it's a very long story. Ah, uh, the job thing. I really thing. don't want to think about that. <laughs> I thought you were dead, Gaspard. I was... I thought you were dead. Oh, no, um... Yes, no, thank you for getting me out of there. Um, I would say I'd return the favor, but I'm not sure... I don't exactly think you can... Mm-mm. Um, yes, no, um... You're, you're all... You're all good people, better than, you know... You deserve better than you've been getting, I, I, I suppose I would say. I don't know, I do get the best from mummy. That's fair. <laughs> you know what, you've, you've had yours. <laughs> <laughs> Is it too indirect to ask what you are? Too indirect? That's rather <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, that's what I'm about, sorry. Is that too indirect? I'm a Pisces. <laughs> Is it too indirect? There we go. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think I've settled with inter. No, I mean, with what you uh, momentarily turned into when you were helping Matilda. That's just Gaspard. Well, of course. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, Ray, you can't just ask people what they are. For <laughs> 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 Vander. I... <laughs> That's sort of a, a sore topic, you know, it's, um, it's kind of the one thing that keeps me safe, so, um, to, I, I don't exactly, um, like to reveal, um, my abilities, and, um, so I'm, I'm an actor, very good at it, I, um, delude myself into believing a sort of um, logical motif, and I run with it. I'll take that answer. They're not that good at acting. Just so innocent. Oh. Handy Pages was pretty awesome. <laughs> that was, yes, okay. no, that was um, very useful at the time. Um, uh, I, I don't know how to answer that question, to be oh, okay. completely honest. I just ask because I can tell you're not a fae, but that I don't know uh, whatever you did. It's something I haven't seen a non-fae do. Oh, well, I mean, I don't know what I did, to be completely honest. Um, it just sort of resonated with me and it felt appropriate. I suppose I knew there would be a loss of some sort of exchange, but um, I can't really answer what I did. Eventually, I'm sure you'll find out. I'm all right leaving some mysteries to the cosmos. <laughs> um, it would be a bit vain to think we would solve all of them, yes? Yes, no, I... I... <sighs> Oh, 
I, um, I guess to speak to your question more of how you intended, um, the thing that ticked me off about our haggish friend was that she reminded me of a time where I was, um, trapped, I suppose you would say, and, um, I suppose I realize I'm doing that now. I've only been Gaspard for, uh, God, I've been Gaspard for like two years. I was 19, I don't remember. Um, Are you 21 now? Maybe. They're so young. Am I? Yeah. They haven't even reached the age of maturity. I don't know what you're talking about. In human years, they have. It's, I mean, it's, it's, it's a short time to have an identity, but it's a very long time to be the same identity, you know? I mean, sometimes you have to make changes, I understand. That's true. Wait, you're 21? I mean, um, I think. That means Mummy is hiring minors. I need to let her know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure they're an adult. For their species. Well, that... well, then why did Mummy keep me at home? Well, 30 just seemed 40. like an appropriate age to be. So, mm. I mean, plus I, I was that the last time that I've changed. So I just <laughs> was 30. I mean, it's frankly not her fault. Us being almost the same age explains a few things, actually. And you said you were 40. Yes, I just reached the age of maturity. <laughs> no, you haven't. <laughs> yes, I you have. Are past middle age for your people. I don't know what you're talking about, and I'm <laughs> not okay don't, with it. We don't uh, tell Half Pint she's going to die soon. <laughs> she thinks she's a gnome. Why are we lying to her? Because we should tell the... I don't think I'm a gnome. <laughs> but you don't age similarly to a gnome. How do you know that? Because you're not a gnome. <laughs> Listen, life on Earth for most of these people are very short, and we should let them enjoy it without them letting without letting them know how short their time is. But if her and mummy how fleeting her life is, her mummy point. took away. A good couple decades from her. Half With an extended childhood, that's not bad. So <laughs> that leaves very little left for her to enjoy as not a child. Honestly, is life great after childhood? Because, like, things really went downhill after 80. I'm only 50-something. Yeah, so you still have a couple good years to live. I have before several go to... good years. I have a hundred years at least. Yeah, me too. No, <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> I'm you sorry, your mummy lied to you. <laughs> Frankly, I think once you reach a certain age, your brain just starts to get over. Um, <sighs> you need to ask your mummy some questions. I hope she needs to <laughs> some questions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna go over and take Sonny's spot by Matilda and like <laughs> rub her like shin and like her put chin? It... Shin! Oh, her I chin. was like, I was I'm fine. fine. <laughs> I don't know, I was We're terrifying. Just beauty moment. <laughs> <laughs> Ask him questions. So you rub her shin? Yeah, and okay. just put like two points of um. Uh, lay on hand peeling. Okay. Yeah. She she stirs a little as you do that, and you actually hear a, everybody as if the, the talking is going on, which I do not want to interrupt because this is amazing. <laughs> not the way I thought it was going to go, and amazing. Um, you you all kind of just hear in the background Matilda make a really like soft cry, like not in surprise or anything, but just like a, uh, like a pained "I'm asleep and something hurts" cry. Oh, so. Sonny's right back at the bed. <laughs> oh. But yes, I would suggest talking to your mummy. Look, this didn't come from mummy. This came from Dr. Inkspot, so... Who? You don't even know who Dr. Inkspot is, so you definitely don't know how long I'm going to live. Okay, but is this Inkspot a gnome? Why does it matter if Dr. Inkspot is a gnome? <laughs> because if Inkspot told you you have a life expectancy of a gnome, I don't think he's cut out to be a doctor. <laughs> I think it's not a medical doctor. What kind of doctor is he? <laughs> A medical doctor would be the one to ex give her life expectancy. <laughs> Who's my private tutor? That's a, 
What kind of tutor, first of all? Everything. Like, like all my all the subjects. Like I guess a that's, governess. It's yeah. a little broad to well, give you life expectancy. Yeah, because we're not we a gnome. Orc history, oh. but more gnome history. We, and we also we did some anatomy, but it was gnome anatomy. So, do you know any of your own anatomy? Vander is the barista that hands you a cup of tea and demands tea in return. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he really is. For your own benefit. He yeah. really is. <laughs> tea, tea includes free therapy. I <laughs> have all the same parts as the gnome, so why does it matter? Like vaguely, I suppose. Yeah. But also not the same life expectancy. Let's let's get that across. I'm bigger, so I'll live longer. No, you live shorter <laughs> because you're bigger. If we all stay together, oh, well, I guess that doesn't really count for me. Because I'm you as we have. Our life expectancy is not going to reach its determined end. <laughs> no, of course, we're going yes. to be fine. But I still think she should talk to her this mummy about <laughs> mummy lying to her about her life expectancy. She is not a child into her forties. She was a, an adult. Hey, 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 hey! I know I say a lot of things, but her mummy is a wonderful and liar. She's a liar. <laughs> <laughs> Look, and I reach into my backpack and I shovel a few things around and I hand you a book. This changed my life. <laughs> uh, what's this say? If you ever... <laughs> what we're saying. Damn it, I forgot. Yeah, there, is a name for it. there is a name for it. How to accumulate wealth and antagonize people. Um, if, if you ever look at this dynamic and you're like, why that book? I don't want the answer <laughs> to why. <laughs> This is not a good. <laughs> I'm gonna head it back. It's Kaylee. <laughs> mummy wrote that. Yes, Mummy wrote that. Good for Mummy. You... But let's just get quiet, the... please. <laughs> Sorry, Sonny. I think this has Thank been you. a really aggressive whisper. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say one thing. Hmm. You reached maturity when you were ten. Ish. No, that's not right. Yes. No, definitely not. When you bend your knees, do they hurt? <laughs> I bend my knees. Do they hurt? A little bit. No. <laughs> <laughs> Something about that no seemed a little annoyed and angry. Oh my god! I she don't protest. <laughs> <laughs> Look, there's other things to deal with than my knees. No, okay. I'm talking about EG's your life time. Oh my god, I love that. While that's happening, if you don't mind me jumping in, um, I'm gonna chit chat with uh, Sonny and be like, so, seems like you and Matilda became really fast friends. She like your best friend now? <laughs> or did you know her before? No, I didn't know her before. It's, it's not really important right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you just, you seem to really care about her a lot, and it's really great. Not exactly what I expected to happen. <laughs> you know, we never know who our best friends are going to be. They just come wandering into our lives and then we're stuck with them for the rest of life <laughs> until they die. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, she's not dying today. No, absolutely not. None of us are dying today. No. Sonny, give mm -hmm. me a couple years. Roll an insight check, please. Mm hmm. Passive insight, perhaps, but oh, ooh, slid around. That is 18. Cass wasn't kidding about the quip that she just made. That wasn't a joke. Uh huh. She was way too serious about that, even though she tried to make it a joke. You pick mm -hmm. up on it. It's, uh... I'm glad she's no theater, but I'm guessing you've had a friend as well? Yeah. Mm. Yep. I mean, some years ago, but yeah, mm. it was nice. So it's really great to see you maybe find someone so special. 
I suppose we'll see how things go. It's going to be okay. And you'll have many adventures. <laughs> I hope so. Is there anything else anyone wants to discuss? Are oh. you ready for the guard captain? I think I'm ready. I don't have anything. Nothing big happened for me. Nothing big. Nothing big. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's how that reevaluates her life. <laughs> <laughs> I see Vander like sliding the frame in front of that fight. <laughs> oh, good fight. Did very well. We're dealing with reality. Um, so we we protect um, our friends. Let's say entrepreneurial uh, foundations and uh, prevent anyone from possibly you know spreading rumors or anything like that. Oh yeah. What are we going to talk about? Um. Is there something specifically I should not say? Because if if there is, like you you got to tell me. I'm not gonna guess. Maybe we don't mention the Emporium at all. Nothing okay. to do with Matilda. It's not relevant. You know, it's just simply. Um... It's just where we were. <clears throat> Honestly, I think I probably would have found you anywhere. I was trying to think of a reason for why we pursued the hag and obviously she ate I your have no reasons, but yes but before that why were we pursuing the hag because of it... the stalkers yeah oh, right. and the went after vander so that's a good reason it went after vander and then it went after you and uh sonny's vision of them all pouring out of that little uh uh rundown shack mm -hmm. that the bakery turned out to be mm -hmm. and you were able to find you were the one that found that the bakery was this building it was just simply covered up oh really yeah, you could just uh, phrase it like that, if you're worried about um, revealing too much. Frankly, I think that was old Cass. She was there when we were talking to the cleric, because she has likewise interests with the cleric. Oh, so, you I found mean... about the ho uh, the the hollow spell. Yeah. And stuff. Yeah. See, there we go. That was yeah. all all there. Seems you trying. Seems like you're trying to deflect from you having a wand. <laughs> We Honestly, don't need to mention that I unless they ask. Keep yeah. forgetting I even did that. Um, Ow. <laughs> a lot's happened. That's fair. Yes, I'm quite aware a lot happened. I'll take back the wand if you want. I will fess up to the wand. I don't care anymore. Don't Frankly, it's to... more un for it anything up. else. Nobody Can bring I it up. trust you with this? Absolutely not. And I try to think. <laughs> Nobody bring it up. If they ask, anyway. we, we try to deflect. <laughs> Sure. Well, not too much. I mean, we can be honest about some stuff. We don't want her to think no. that we're criminals. I just mean the one. Oh, yes. Yeah. No, I don't, again, I don't care. I will say I'm not a great liar, so... Um, what I do we will... have to lie about? Nothing. Um, that's the thing. If we... I don't know. There's no lying unless they specifically ask about something that might have been a little illegal in the middle of a city. And in that case, then we... Um, I won't talk. Frankly, if they sell these things without request for like any experience or licenses, <laughs> I don't really see how it's anyone's fault. Yeah, there is no background check you had to do. Exactly. <laughs> the law is the problem. Um, <laughs> so, look, they're going to ask us about these low steels. This, um, you know, and I, I take out a piece of paper and I scribble their their insignia and such. But they were funneling. What was it? Ghoul dust? To the bakery, yes. To the bakery. So they're going to ask about the bakery. They're going to say, hey, well, since you did this, why don't you? And then we're going to say, oh, of course, we're great people. Um, we can refuse. We can. If they... Let's just see how the questions go and not That's worry true. about what happens after until it is after. Yes. We, we don't have control of anything until then, yes. What an awful thing to say, but you're right, you're absolutely right. Um, yes, let's just let fate be as it is. It's mostly worked out so far for me. Mm. Mm. So maybe you should trust it a bit more. Okay. Where is everybody in the room right now? Because mm -hmm. Cass and Sonny are sitting on the bed or up next to the bed. 
mm-hmm. with Matilda. Is everybody else kind of spread out? Gaspard's still near the window. Yeah, it's not. Like I'm lingering near half mine. <laughs> Just giving that like stare. <laughs> so are all three of you by the window then? Yeah. Just kind of where I'm sure. Okay. okay. Um, <clears throat> Sonny and Cass, roll initiative. What? Initiative? Oh my. You'll see. Just trust me. Hmm? Interesting. Well, I don't know what my gun though. Oh. <laughs> you go first. Well, yes, when initiative matters, you go mm-hmm. first, and it's going to be very short one way or the other. Um, as you're all talking, there's a very ragged, terrified gasp from behind you both, or next to you both as consciousness returns to Anastasia Mm -hmm. and her eyes flare open with the weird splattered kind of neon pink on the aqua blue and she looks utterly terrified and her hand snaps out immediately in the very familiar gesture now that can summon a spear Mm -hmm. you go first though and you can try to intercede Mm -hmm. I think Sonny is just like, oh, hey, 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 it's me, it's me, it's me. And then, like, puts a hand on her arm and, like, leans in front, leans into her vision more. Okay, so mm-hmm. you'll, you'll say that mm-hmm. and, like, put a hand on that arm? Yeah. Okay. Oh. So, you say that, you slide into her vision, mm-hmm. you, you, you touch the arm, uh-huh. and she is already, like, hyperventilating and just mm-hmm. stares at you as the hand, like, quivers over the bed. And you can all see that, like, the sheets already forming into the, like, the pointed tip of a spear, but it just stays the beginning of it. And she's, like, hyperventilating as she looks at Sonny. Can I do something? You can, yes. I cast calm emotions. <laughs> <laughs> Roll into initiative for me really quick, okay. just, just to see Let's that. see where that is. Uh, that is a 19. Okay. Um, I will say yes, you can, you can cast... Who is a yeah, cast calm emotions. Go for it. Yeah. Um what is that a save? Oh, it's not on this one. Uh but it should be a if it is a save, it should be a fifteen. So um DM note mm-hmm. for my lovely lovely possible bard. Mm-hmm. Calm emotions is a twenty foot radius sphere. Oh, I don't care. Let's all <laughs> chill out. <laughs> Okay. Gaspar takes out a spliff. Everybody, hold on. We're hotboxing this bitch. <laughs> uh, so I assume that you, when Gaspar sees the hand go up and the spear start to form, you, it's just kind of like an instinctive, like, it's cast. Yeah, I don't know what's happening. She like, looks like she's in duress. Yeah. Okay, so what is your save for this? 15? Uh, if the creature fails, it's saving throw. Uh, charisma. 15 charisma saving throw. 15 charisma saving throw. So everybody everybody needs to make that unless you're somehow uh, immune to enchantments or immune to any kind of altering effects. I think it's a charm okay, effect, technically. Oh, no. I am very calm right now. I am very relaxed. <laughs> Natural. Yeah, nat one. Okay. You got a nat one? 21. So did everybody just fail except Cass? No, 15 minutes to check. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, 15 minutes to check. Okay, mm-hmm. sorry. Mm-hmm. I got distracted trying to count the numbers up. What was it? 21. To pass. 12. So, super calm, chill. <laughs> You're like, oh, it's okay. Mummy sounds cool. Oh, <laughs> no! <laughs> 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 a moment. <laughs> One. So, yeah, you're, you're chill. 15. 15, so you're, you're normal. It hits you too. Does it? Okay. I believe it does, yes. Natural one, so I'm also like, (laughs) guys. It's not designed to hit you, but you fired it in a room where you're next to the point you picked, which is Matilda. So it does hit you. (laughs) Guys, just calm down. (laughs) So. (laughs) Weren't you playing with Booch, Vander? (laughs) Affected, affected, not affected. Matilda's not affected either by it. (laughs) <laughs> she's saved by one, and she she actually has a really high uh, save for it. I realized that whatever charisma was like, oh no. Yeah. <laughs> so the wave of calm washes through some of you. You both obviously realized the spell was cast and that you felt it try to take over and you resisted whatever it was from Gaspard. She is still hyperventilating on the bed with the mm-hmm. spear sticking out of the mattress. Mm-hmm. Anything you're going to do? Is she currently restrained? 
Sonny is is like has a hand on her arm, and this is all okay. He, we're, we're resolving this six seconds. This is not going beyond like six seconds of action to see what happens in this burst of activity. So yeah, Sonny's hand is holding the arm, and it's like the spear hasn't moved further up out of the bed. Um, I am going to cast Entangle on her and just make like a nice little like flower cocoon. <laughs> It's supposed to be very comforting. Okay, okay. Um, yeah. But she needs to make a strength saving throw. To... Uh, of? Uh, strength save 11. Strength save 11. That was so low. Probably because it's being cast from like one of your stats. Oh yeah, that from a... my druid spot. Say what? Oh, well, it's a druid. Um, mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah. It's not something that's from your main. So yeah, she fails, um, surprisingly. Um, so yeah, you're able to describe it again for us? Um, it's going to be like, vines are going to come up and just like kind of cocoon her in place, like like a weighted blanket. Okay. And keep her arm from like moving and throwing spears. Well, if you're, if you, if, since you've successfully entangled her, you can actually just pull her arm back down to the bed in her side if you're yeah. going to try and like bind her kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, nice little, you know, swaddle. Okay. So, yeah. Vines with yeah. Some it, flowers. It's, <laughs> so, in this six second span, the spell is cast. Sonny, you know, pleads to Matilda, pushes her arm down a little bit or just touches her arm. Um, and then Cass just twists her hand and these vines just kind of these magical vines materialize out of the bed and kind of wrap over matilda and jerk the arm down so it's no longer able to cast the spear does recede like back into the bed and vanish um but as she's entangled she starts to actually hold on let me confirm this i look at half pine it's like i don't understand why they're all freaking out <laughs> i this is yeah this is very dramatic honestly matilda starts to cry in a panic and she tries to say Sonny's name looking up at her. Oh, that's and that's where we're going to take the break. <laughs> so, <laughs> we will pick up on that moment in just a minute, but I'm really overdue to give these these wonderful players a break. We'll try to be back in just like five minutes or something like that. So if you're enjoying, stay around and see what happens here in a few minutes, but we'll be right back. And we're back. Uh, and we all have to hydrate again because of Wiffle Froom. I'm going to say the whole name because it amuses me. And I'm surprised I said it without breaking into laughter. But thank you for that. All right. So we'll jump right back into that. So uh, the roots quickly mm -hmm. secure Matilda to the bed. And she just bursts into tears in reaction, which is kind of weird for somebody that you consider is somewhat powerful after you saw what she just did. But she just cries and kind of garbles out Sonny's name. Cass lets her go. Let her out. I, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll let her out. Everything comes back? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Okay. She immediately just, like, rolls half over, grabs your waist, and buries her face into your stomach again. Okay. And is crying. Sonny just hugs her. Okay. She's like, hey, hey, it's okay. It's okay. You're safe. As, as you, like, reach down and start to hug her, you hear footsteps outside. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like Kovita is probably approaching with a couple guards. Oh, nice. Kovita's coming. Does she look like Anastasia right now, or does she look like... She looks like Anastasia. Okay. But remember, for at least until Kovita gets here, because this is all going to happen within the duration of the spell, by the time Kovita gets here, the spell will, will wear off. But you all have calm emotions on you. Mm -hmm. well, three of us do. <laughs> yeah, the, the ones of you that were affected, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. She gonna stay like this? I, yeah, I, I made sure. Okay, yeah, just don't want her to. She won't. Like... She won't. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, she's squeezing you. <laughs> Very tight, um, and is just not wanting to do anything other than bury her face in your stomach and cry right now. Probably still like in some level of shock or mm -hmm. something like that. But she's she definitely is happy to be um, in your lap. Mm -hmm. So, nothing else for the last for a little bit before Kavita? Put the blanket around them. Because mm -hmm. you're just like, ah, here you go. Oh, thank you. <laughs> cool. <laughs> okay, so a handful of seconds later, uh, the door is opened. Uh, there's a very polite knock, and the door is pushed open uh, by Kavita. 
she is not wearing any armor or any weapons right now and seems like she's dressed for just kind of casual wear. Um, her clothing is like kind of dark blue with silver highlights. She's got a pretty simple tunic on. Um, but she does have what is probably the symbol of Orishire, like pinned to the tunic in like a faint brass color. And other than that, she looks like, you know, you could just encounter walking around the street kind of thing. Um, she does have a, a thick tome in one hand and a quill, and she just walks in by herself and just kind of pauses and like assesses the feel of the room. And, you know, the main thing that she focuses on is the sounds of crying mm -hmm. um, coming from Anastasia and Sonny, and mm -hmm. she stops. Do I need to come back later? I thought you might have had enough time, but if something is, is wrong or you need something... She, she just woke up. Oh, I... Understandable. Did you need more time then to tend to your friend or your acquaintance or? Why don't we start and Sonny and yeah, Anastasia we'll just can just, you know, chill out for a bit until they're ready to join us. We'll go across the hall. It'll be fine. Uh, mm. I, I, we can. I was just going to do the interview and talk to you all here. We have a more formal you can come into the actual barracks if you'd like. I have an office and we have meeting rooms and everything, but I assumed even after the rest you would feel more comfortable here, especially after the ideas that I might be putting you under arrest. This is fine, but maybe another room so Anastasia can... Anastasia. Is Anastasia one of your group? She's our friend, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that answers one of my questions. Um, did you want privacy or...? Just, just for a few minutes, please. Of course. Yeah, let, let us go to one of the other rooms that you grabbed, the one next door. So, mm -hmm. all right. So everybody goes over. Mm -hmm. uh, as you're walking over, Calm Emotions does die. So oh. <laughs> you, you, you snap. And the way that it works with Calm Emotions typically is so like as the spell fades, in your mind, the, the fog over your mind lifts. You remember everything that happened, obviously, but now the real emotions kind of hit you of, mm, of what kind of happened. So, one way or another. But yeah, Kovita walks you all over to what was Cass's room um, and just waits for everybody to get inside. She leaves the door open, though, for Sonny and Anastasia mm -hmm. to join when they're ready. And she just leans up against um, one of the side walls near one of the beds, and she waits for everybody to kind of like situate themselves and get in the room. Did you all manage to get some rest? Yes. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, I hope that you're feeling much better now. The guards took care of you. You got your food, correct? Oh yes, it was the best food I've ever had. Pretty good. Hey. Better for the DM. Yes. I mean, I mean, not better than yours. Did we bathe last night? There were baths in your room that you could bathe in. So okay. it was up to you if you bathed or not. Thank you. Um, well, I have some things to go over with you all. I would prefer the other to be here first. But there are general questions that I can ask um, because we have not gone over many things. Uh, first of all, can I please have your names, full names, preferably? And she's just going to go around and get everybody's names, but if you give it to her and everything. Cassiana Amastasi. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, and where do you hail from? Generally treetop. Really? Mm -hmm. In, uh, impressive. Um, Bander. Just, treetop as well. Just, ben just, just Bander? Oh, treetop. Okay. Half pint Alameda Adora Blue Flame. And make sure you camel case that blue flame. The B and the F are both capitalized. Ah. <laughs> uh, and you, sir? Would you believe Sandy Pages? I would not, though <laughs> it was a very convincing act until I saw you elsewhere. I will at least give you that for your performance, sir. Yes, from Dorici, and um, not really from anywhere. Say that again? Yes, from Dorici. Hmm. All right. And what brings you to Orishire in general? We were traveling. We were wrapping up a job. We were in the area. We came into town to uh, just get some provisions and head on our way. Well, so a casual visit then? Yeah. So have any of you been in Orishire before? Do you know the history of our town with this first visit? No, just heard about it from a friend. 
But I feel mean, like I belong here. I mean, the fashion sense is fantastic. It has been in more Orange is your color. Thank you. Gaspard was implying otherwise. It was very upsetting. Did you, was were you funny? saying, uh, were you asking question, Mander? Oh, no. Sorry. Oh, okay. I, the armor is quite pleasing. Um, I'm assuming that you got it from Hammond. Mm-hmm. He likes to make things very flashy. The style changed in the last couple of years, as did many things, but it is quite pleasant. Um, so, passing through, are you all some sort of a company? You seem to at least know each other as friends. That does not mean you are necessarily adventuring together, as they say. It's really hard to find the right words for this sort of thing, but you know the famous groups, the Heroes of Arlia, the, you know, Hell, Hell or High Waters, stuff like that. Are you a group that has gotten together under a banner, under a cause, or are you just traveling individuals that happen to know a few things? We're on our way to, to, to visit another friend that we're not happy with. They are. I'm a new addition. Oh, so you just you just met them? Yes. I'm from Era Drama, so I don't really know. That's quite far. Hmm. So just together for the moment, it sounds like more? Yeah, it's more like we had a job. We're figuring this out. Do we continue working together? Do we go our own separate ways? So like, yeah, no formal group name. Oh, okay. But we could be the heroes of Orshire. I <laughs> think. I, I like mean, that. I am not one for titles, yeah. typically, but the the term has been said in the streets more than once since word has word has got out as it does that it was a type of hag that was killed, <laughs> and not that your identities are really well known, but I did hear some of your names. Um, so somehow you know how it is. Rumors spread, and Heroes of Orishire has been tossed around, um, and that's one of the reasons we need to talk among among many things. Um, before I continue, is there any questions you have for me, perhaps? Do you know you had a hag in there? We did not. I need, I need someone to give me a drawing that is very detailed of, of, of Dwarf Man's face. Oh, Khalil, I, I'm having them look up his formal residence. I doubt we'll find him there, but um, Esther, and one of the male guards like peeks his head in. Can you get uh, Seth to draw up, Khalil, some kind of a sketch for one of the? Yes, thank you. More and detailed than just a dwarf man. Well, obviously we okay. we're in the enforcement business. We know what you mean. But yes, I can get that, and we'll have his address soon. And I'm having someone swing by to see if he's there. But just let's say from experience, I don't think he'll be there. But maybe there will be clues and other things. You think he knew about? What was happening? Did he did he put the hag there? How long was that building there? The building is new. It's only been there for seven months or so. That building is not new. Refurbished. Let's well, say. yes. There, there was always a, a ramshackle bookstore there that it was quaint, I guess you could call it that, and eventually it went out of business and the, the building was very ramshackle. And it came under new ownership. Khalil bought it and they built the invisible vial there. So to answer your question, I don't, I don't know what was going on with the building. I have many questions. Khalil, though, let me say it this way. If I send a guard to his house and he's not there, he was involved with it and behind it. If he's there, I think he was more of a well-meaning individual that got up, wrapped up in something he might not have even understood. It's complicated. Khalil doesn't have that sort of... I've never picked up on malicious intent from him, and I do... That is one thing I'm very good at. But if he Did you is eat not, at that bakery? I'm sorry? Did you eat at that bakery? I, no, I, it's not my type of food. Do you have any of the powder there? I do. I whip out the bag of powder. I put, a, like, a line on my finger. I'm like, smell this. She's like, she closes the book and leans out. <laughs> what is that? That's what people were eating in the bakery. That's Shit! Cool. Damning evidence. I think I it's say. dead people. Gold dust. Good. As in the re the reagent? It was being put in the food? That's disgusting, but it's a reagent for spell casting, and it's a very restricted one and illegal. If that, what would why would you feed it to people? To make Gaspar's dreams tasty. <laughs> Um, I heard oh, that yeah. it made it easier for the hag to feed on people because it gave them nightmares or something. Mm -hmm. The hag could track the scent of 
powdered ghoul. They were, they were marking people. They were. Oh, and she like opens the book again and starts scribbling notes, just shaking her head, like the look of horror kind of setting in on her face. Oh, oh, and you would believe who was supplying it. And I pull out the drawing I made of the sigil of the low steels. She glances up and kind of just grimaces. Yes, remember in the alley I told you we found the symbol on. The... Okay, I mean I thought it was a fun detail, but well, fine. It, it, no, it is a fun no, detail. Fine. I mean, <laughs> definition of fun varying, of course, there. But it. Uh... Gaspar doesn't find eating dead people fun. Just Nobody to be clear. yet. <laughs> I don't think anyone here thinks that. Ah. So we'll we'll pause there and then we'll go back to the other room just so we don't leave Sonny and Anastasia too far behind uh, with questions because there's a lot that that is going to need to happen there. So once everybody was gone, by about that time, her crying did stop, but she hasn't looked at you or anything. And her face is just buried. It's okay. It's okay. We're safe. I'm just holding her and like fingers in her hair, just like that was very brave. <laughs> she pulls her face back just enough to be able to talk a bit clearly and goes, I I wasn't trying to be brave. I was trying to make sure you didn't die and they didn't die. I died. I don't know how to what to do with that. How are you feeling? My chest hurts a lot, and my heart hurts. Every there's a lot of pain. I think it's the main thing. There's a lot of pain, um, and I think I'm embarrassed. And that's actually when she pulls her head back and looks up at you for the very first time since all this. I I'm in, everyone's well. I'm not embarrassed, but it's it's everyone is seeing me like this, right? So far, yes. What have they said? I mean, not that that matters. Are you okay? What am I even saying? Are you all right? I, I'm okay. Okay. Fuck. What is even happening right now? Where are we? Uh, Kovita and the guards showed up a little bit after the hag died. Okay. Um, um they... Took a wagon ride from them back to the barracks. We'll steal manor. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's out. It's on the docks. Yeah. Um, That's where we are now. Fuck. Um. All right. And I, no one's told them who you are. What do you mean? And it's, we've. It's only they've only seen you like this. Uh, Gaspard had the idea to call you Anastasia, and no, nobody knows that it's you. I didn't think it was. Our secret to tell. Oh, I mean, thank you. What? Why am I not? I wasn't. The rune didn't kick in. I. Uh, they had already seen you. I turned it off. You you turned it off? It wasn't working. It was changing you back and forth. And she I... like rolls and like looks and <laughs> sees the like darkened, deactivated rune and just. How did you do that? <laughs> little blood rune. I've never been able to deactivate that. That's an, in, that's really impressive that you knew how. They just read the pattern and I saw there was a part that was not directing the magic correctly and I just blocked it for now. It's not really fixed. I just turned it off. I mean, I didn't want it on. <laughs> I didn't think it would be like this, at least. I thought it would be more of a happy thing. Where did everyone go? Uh, they're, they're talking to Kavita. She got here right after you woke up, and I didn't think okay. it was good to leave you like that. And she puts a hand on, like, the bruise and just presses into it. So the hag's dead. You're okay. They're okay? It, yes. Okay. Something. How am I alive? I mean... I, I'm not sure. Gaspar did something. Magic? I just remember, I died. I then I wasn't dead. I know. They're they're a changeling, I think. I don't I don't know what they did, but they touched you and then you started to form back together and I, I'm just happy you're here. I mean I'm happy too. I have questions. I have I a lot think of everyone has a lot of questions uh, right now. Yeah. 
And she finally rolls like onto her back, at mm -hmm. least looking up at, at Sonny. Mm -hmm. Are you sure you're okay? I'm dealing. Yeah, I can imagine that you're dealing. I, I didn't mean for the grandiose. I just I, didn't want you to die. Well, I didn't want you to die either. You're not mad, right? No. I'm feeling better now. Okay. Um, I, I actually have a good relationship with Kobita. She's really nice. And he, I, I got the impression she gave us potions. She's really sweet, actually. She just, her kids moved away. It's a whole thing. Um, so she probably can know. And I mean, this is not, I want, I'm not going to go back to the room anyway. Uh, it, should it, we go over? It's when you're ready. It's, I mean, you can tell her what you wish to tell her. I just, like I said, your secrets are not ours to share. Thanks. And she's just going to take like a moment to catch her breath. You can feel like in your legs, just her heart is still thudding rapidly in her chest. Mm -hmm. um, kind of this is all happening while, while the conversation is going on. And she's going to still need a minute probably mm -hmm. before she gets up. So we're going to say like a couple more minutes pass. So we'll, mm -hmm. we'll bounce between the, the rooms again. Um, so back on this side of things. <laughs> with the flummox Kobita. Um, we we're going to jump right back in with the conversation talking about the ghoul dust. Um, I'm sorry, I'm trying to remember the last thing that was said with my notes. What did we say last? Yes, Bard does not find eating dead people yes. amusing. <laughs> yes. Well, nobody, nobody feels that eating dead people is regardless. They were feeding people ghoul dust. The hag tracked them and did something to them. Mm -hmm. Yes. What did the head do? Fed off their nightmares? Correct? Yeah, ate Gaspard's dreams. This happened to you, sir? Yes. Yes, it did. Wonderful time. Are you all right? Well, it's gone, so yes, I suppose I'll be fine. That is not what I mean. I mean, do you need a healer that possesses great magic to rid yourself of a curse or something else? I'm very serious about ensuring your safety and health, as I am every mm. citizen of Orishire. Oh, I suppose just a little bit of mental fatigue, but otherwise I'm fine. All right. But this Hague did something to your dreams? Well, made me relive them, and then I suppose fed upon them, and uh, I woke up feeling physically fatigued. That is horrible. I'm sorry that that happened to you. No, it's dead, so why don't they care? I mean, yes, it is dead, and to be quite honest, you're very impressive that you were able to um <laughs> um sorry this word um your the fact that you managed to kill one is in short mind boggling they are very powerful creatures and this one apparently had lost any ability to reason so i i shudder to think the raw power that was contained within it so you are all to be commended again and again. I just don't understand. I mean, I do. I do. I'm putting the dots together now, but it is still a plan that feels half thought out and incredibly cruel to just hurt the people of Orishire. There's no benefit. There's no... It's not like they were making... I assume they were making some money off it, but it's not like this was a get-rich-quick scheme for Khalil. This was hurt people. Hurt as many people as you can. Doesn't make Sonny sense. knows more, I think, than we do in, about the dream stuff. Uh, she's going to, like, look at the open door. She's not going to move or anything, but she's, she's going to raise her voice and be like, Sonny, Anastasia, if you could join us, please, if you're feeling up to it. And then shoop, back to the other side. Um, she's just going to sit there. She's going to lay there in your lap for a little bit. Mm -hmm catching her breath, letting her heart kind of calm down. Eyes closed, eyes open, just trying to breathe, not wanting to move. Right before um, Kobita calls out, she seems like she's kind of composed herself. And she, she reopens her eyes and looks back at Sonny. Okay, before anything else happens, uh, you have to forgive me. This is all been a whirlwind. 
It really has. Not a bad one at all. Not well, the whole that you know what I mean. Mostly not. Yeah. Um, Mostly not. It's been it's been worth it. Do you not want what should I tell them? It's up to you because I mean I have my opinion on the matter, but I uh, just put you through hell. I mean the city, the the hag put you through hell, but like I just the bruise and what do I do? <laughs> just tell her whatever you're comfortable with. What are you comfortable with? Sonny just smiles and gives her a kiss. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, she she smiles and kisses her back and doesn't say anything else other than looking. She looks at Sonny in disbelief yet again, and that's when you both hear the uh, invitation from Kovita, and I'm assuming Sonny Sonny will go over if Matilda does. Mm -hmm. Okay. So moments later. Uh, Sonny and Anastasia <laughs> walk in arm in arm and Kovita just kind of like nods over at them, uh, specifically like just instantly zeroing in on Sonny um, in, in an inquisitive way. Uh, sorry, your friends were saying that you knew more about um, the Hague and what it was doing. They were telling me about its eating dreams. They filled me in a bit, but it seemed like you possessed more information. Um, a, a little. I, I saw it attacking Gaspard. You saw it? <sighs> Long story, I was awake, it came in and started trying to do something to him in his sleep, and the two of us saw it happen, and, well, we figured if we wake Gaspard up, it's just going to disappear, but maybe we can see where it's coming from, because it wasn't really there, it was projecting from somewhere else. Project? Oh. Well, that would explain a few things with the... The crimes we've been having. Okay, so you tried to track it. Yes. And you were successful? Mm -hmm. Obviously, in a way? Uh, yes, we found other places it had been. So, it was just, it was hurting these people in their dreams, though. Was there, was there, do you know why? Do you know anything else? Well, those people that were attacking you out in front of the bakery? The ones in the robes, yes. Yes, the two of us saw more of them last night when we were trying to find the hag. They were leaving a building and talking about stealing everything there. Interesting. So, the robberies and the... They were using it as a cover to get into people's houses, weren't they? That would or be... Or they were benefiting from it, it. So there were more robberies? Then yes, that would probably make sense. So the hag, the hag would track those that ate the ghoul dust, and then their, whatever you want to call them, the men in the robes would sack the house. Mm -hmm. That explains so much about our crime in the city for the past six, seven months, to tie in with the invisible vile timeline that you just said. Ah, well, now that you're all here, I can tell you my piece, that is the piece that I'm fixated on, not that I'm not fixated on all this, the the first sign that something was wrong was when I looked at the bodies of the men that attacked us that we had killed. I know half of the faces. They are people that I have seen before myself and fought once in the past as well. And they are part of that family I was telling you about, the one with the rune that you just draw. And since you do not know anything about our city, I will give you the briefest of brief history lessons, at least in regards to this very one event, which is, how to put this diplomatically, uh, about 40-some years ago, Orishire was not known for our bright colors and, and the things that you have all kind of mentioned to me so far about our, our city and, and how fine it is. It was a pile of ghoul dust, let's say that. It was rife with criminal activity and... It was falling apart, but worst of all, in most of our minds that, that lived here, that were trying to save the bones of the city, was the rampant discrimination. People were driven out of the city if they were not human like myself. Elves were tolerated, uh, but a furblog or whatever you are in pointing at Anastasia, and you as well in points at Sani, you are wonderful people, and of course, it was a very 
strict city on the people they wanted here. And they, they drove out so many that had made this city their home for so long. And it was because this family, the um, Haven Snout family, they were the ones that rose to power in this time. And eventually, pressure built and pressure built and the kettle popped and there was a rebellion. And that's where I first fought alongside a lot of people in the city. And in the end, after a very gruesome battle that lasted a little over a year, we drove the Haven Stout family out and we were able to institute an actual form of government. We got assistance from Battelle and some of the nearby cities. And then there was the many other things that happened. But the, ha the Haven Snouts are a, are a horrible family and they still exist somewhat near the city. Um, we killed a lot of them and we drove them out, but we weren't going to hunt them down. That wasn't the point. It's we wanted to make Orishire the way that we wanted Orishire. But some of those men I remember, and I know their names, I know their faces, but they looked like ghouls. All of the skin was gray, their eyes were yellow, their hair was yellow. Something happened to those men. Khalil doesn't look like that, by the way. So he's not one of whatever that is. But with the family's crest on the ghoul dust, I'm sure the horrific people had something to do. They wanted to get back. It's kind of poetic, actually, in a really messed up way, if you think about it, that they wanted to hurt the very dreams of the people that drove them out of the city and, and mess with them at that level yet again. But they are a, they are a blight on the city. Anyone with the, the, the Haven Stout family's name. And as she says that, Matilda, like, kind of... Matilda's, like, kind of clinging to Sonny's side for the most part. Shorter than Sonny now, which now everybody realizes that she's shorter and smaller. Um, but she actually joins the conversation and looks over at Kobita and says, Well, sorry, you mean, like, the, anyone with a family name, but people that worked for them were, were fine, right? And... She responds, obviously, I, there's many people that were tangled up with the Haven Snouts that uh, are innocent, but typically the family members with the name uh, were the ones behind the horrific acts. Um, and then Matilda responds, sorry, bouncing between two NPCs, I've reset my voice. <laughs> um, I haven't done this in a while, I need to do this more often. Um, so Matilda, <laughs> Matilda looks back and nods and kind of glances at the floor as she's like remembering something. She's like... Well, yeah, there was a lot of good people back then. Um, and there's been a lot of people since then, too, that technically have worked for them or worked with them. Like, G Giovanni was one of them. So there's been lots of different people that have passed through my life. Um, and, like, you see Kobita's eyes kind of narrowing a little bit as she's, like, just curiously looking at Matilda. <laughs> uh, Kobita, it's... It's Matilda! <laughs> and Kobita stares at her. And then, like, looks to Sonny for co confirmation. I, it, I wasn't sure if she wanted to tell you or not. Matilda, like, or Matilda looks up at you and then Kovita. Uh, yeah, it's me, Kovita. Sorry, you've never really seen me like this or anything. Um, and I don't actually have access to magic that would let me show you my Aladrin form. But it's Matilda Ravino. <laughs> and I assume you can at least recognize the voice, right? And, like, the strange eyes blink. And Kovita says, uh, that is... That does sound like you. Um, why didn't you tell me that was Matilda? I told you, I don't think her secrets were ours to share. It's a very kind thing to say. Um, and I, I do understand that. I, I have questions for you, but more on a personal nature, Matilda. I'm glad you're okay, though. I, I'm, I'm sorry to see you in such a state. And Matilda nods and just kind of clings a bit tighter to Sonny for the moment. Um, and then Kobita goes back to like glancing around the group. Regardless of <laughs> developments, um, this family is wicked. And they are the ones behind this. I am so sorry that you got tangled up in this, especially not as our citizens, but people that were passing through. Um, so, I think you've given me a lot of what I need to convince the city council to try and expand the scope of our investigation to reach where they are now. It's not like we're going to be able to do much, but we can at least impose 
diplomatic sanctions and we might be able to get some of the governments, the larger governments here to help us and prove that they did a horrific act in our city. But in regards to all of you, you are completely free to go. Um, you can stay here for another few nights if you need. Um, there is some coin that I'd be able to give you as a reward, but beyond coin, um, I did have something that I wanted to give you as, as more of a personal thank you. It, it, the city council also voted on it, so it's, it's more from Orishire. Um, but I wanted to see what you're going to do next, if you had any other questions, if there's anything else I can do. If I may. Yes? There is one thing that I don't know if we spoke about or handled, rather. Yes. The The original thing that brought me to this town was a sh shadow stalker. Shadow stalker? That I ran into. And right. I'll offer the vial that I originally showed to Matilda. Okay, she takes it and starts looking over, like, listening to you at the same time. And that's how I met these ones. Uh, we fought it together. They saw me fighting it. Okay. I think it is what led us to find the hag, ultimately. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we figured out together that this this ramshackle little uh, hut that the bakery was placed in, in Sonny's vision that she had, um, a lot of the... Uh, more of these were pouring out of it. You had a vision of it? I am a priestess, and sometimes my gods can show me things that they believe I am fated to be involved in. That is quite a gift. And you saw these stalkers? I, I saw the more of them coming from the building, which is why we were looking for it, to see if we could prevent it from happening. Also, I don't think that building has been restored at all, and I hand her the rune that I have. And she takes that and, and looks at it and just kind of like makes a twisted face at like the garishness of the runes. I mean, when it collapsed, the runes were way too old to be the invisible vial, so I'm apt to concur with you. This is, is obviously had some sort of spell on it. Um, so that building's been like that for a while, I think. I would agree with that. It was most likely some powerful magic, but I'd need to have our mages look at this, but they can look at both these samples. So you actually came to Orishire because of the, the what happened to you. Where were you attacked? Out on the road. Just the road to Orishire? Like, how close to you were the city? Do you remember? 15 minute walk. So very close then. And this thing just attacked you? Yes. So you all you all came here to see if they were going to pour out or you were investigating it on a whim? In, originally that, we were passing through. Yeah, they were passing through. I got them all to come help me. <laughs> okay. Originally the rest of us were going to come and rest for a bit and charter a boat somewhere. We were kind of deciding where to go next. Well, I mean, thank you again for investigating because... I don't pretend to know what they were doing beyond what we've figured out here in this room, but maybe somehow they were gaining the ability or the power to do such a thing? My concern is that they may send more Shadow Stalkers, and the issue with Shadow Stalkers is that you can't see them. I've heard, I've heard the rumors. I've never witnessed an attack or anything. You think the family might send them here to extract revenge still? Possibly. I don't think... I don't see the possibility of the, the, since it's in rubble, it's rubble now, that they'll pour out from there, but they might send them from wherever they are, uh, oh. located that. That's what I'm worrying about now. I'm not entirely sure if the hag was making them or they were just coming from the same place. Correct. I mean, those are very good questions. I mean, it's, uh, it's not really my field of expertise. I'm not the magical, uh, magically inclined too much. But that does put a different light on everything that we've, you've discovered, we've discovered, and everything that we're talking about now. If you want to stay, you're more than welcome uh, until we... I need to take... My plan is to take what you told me here tonight and anything else we talk about to the mages, the city council is typically comprised of mages, and we have mages that work for the city guard, and I want them to look at 
any and all evidence, these pieces that you've, you've given me now, if I have your permission, and then things that we have gathered, and see if we can put together that plan to clearly outline what happened and what we're going to do next with this family. Because we're not letting them back in the city after what they did, obviously. And we need to make sure the Haven Snouts don't hurt anyone else. So you're more than welcome to keep these rooms and stay a, a bit longer until we you know, have a day or two to look into this and I can involve you in the pros progress if you want. I'm happy to stay. I have nowhere I need to go immediately. I have to wait for my gun anyway. I'm uh, sorry? Yeah. My gun. What, where did your gun, your gun go? Oh, it's being... I'm having some modifications done to it. Of all the timing. Yeah, well, it's not my fault. Yeah. <laughs> well, just... You can come and go as you please, obviously, but you can keep your key and use it as a, a room, I suppose. Um, and you, you can stay here and eat and drink and uh, be with the troops. And if you give us a day or two, we can try and get answers and involve you in the process and at least maybe send you away with more of a satis more satisfaction than you would have now of knowing what happened and what will happen next. But you are also not bound to us or Orishire by any means, despite the amazing feat that you just performed. Gaspar. Gaspar. What? I'm um, sorry. I think I think she mentioned something about like a prize, but I could ask for a boat. We're staying, right? For if at least a few days. Mm -hmm. Let's hold on to that. Mm -hmm. Good ace in the hole. Ooh. Well, I claim prize now if it would be gathered later. Maybe we'll have a better idea of what sort of thing to ask for. Or where we're going. Yes. I think the consensus is that we're staying. Mm -hmm. Well, I for one will... I assume that this may come across as an empty platitude from someone in my position of power and experience, but believe me when I say I legitimately will sleep better tonight knowing that you did choose to stay at least slightly longer after what you did. It, it is of no... My words, I am not a well-spoken lady. At least I do not think so. And I cannot express properly to you what you have done. For our city and we all appreciate it especially those of us that fought on the front lines of this battle over 40 years ago and have seen the city develop since then and i'm sure that everyone in the city that already has positive feelings about you is going to feel even more in awe once they realize who is involved on the other side of things but can i get a letter from you that states that i half pint <laughs> blue flame helped kill a hag. I mean, of course I can write uh, You're going to spend this to your mother, you aren't you? Yes, I'm going to send this to mommy. <laughs> yes, of course you are. <laughs> she's like confused at the reactions, but she's like, hey, it's kind of an, it's not standard, but I can make something formal for you if you want. That, that would be perfect. I'll get it to you in the morning. Thank you. I'll, I'll have them. I'll, I'll work on it once I deliver this to the council, at least. Okay, but make sure you spell my name right. It's half hyphen pint Capital B blue and then capital F flame, yeah, all one word. Notes. Yeah, I think I got it. <laughs> Are you becoming a monster hunter? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, I feel like this is not the only conversation that we're going to have, obviously, since you've chosen to stay. And there may be more information from my guards the second that I go back to the keep. But this feels like something very solid to go off of, and you've given me this wonderful evidence. I have permission to keep these. For now, I will return them. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Is there anything else that I can do for you while you're here? Oh, I guess um, And I take the black stone out of, my po out of my backpack. Not really as interested in this as I thought I was going to be. Um... <laughs> so Kovita's response is she just kind of like turns and looks at it with like a quizzical expression, and Matilda like runs from Sonny. Like, she lets go of Sonny and <laughs> runs over and spikes it out of your hand. <laughs> it is like, she, she literally jumps a little bit in the air and goes, gets burned! And knocks it down onto the ground and, like, spins off into the corner of the room. Everybody else that was at the fight recognizes it as the, the Hag's heartstone that we, you were playing catch with, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Oh. It just seemed important not to leave it in the streets. That's from a Hag. 
It's a very powerful magical artifact. Why were you carrying that around? Well, because you saw how many people were in the streets. It'd be ridiculous to leave that up there. That's actually a good point. I'm sorry, but that could it could really hurt you. I didn't mean to scare you. Oh, no, I appreciate the effort. But... It's it. She looks over at Kavita. We'll take care of that. And Kavita's just like like standing there watching the action unfold. If it's evidence, I would like it. But if you don't think it's needed, Tilda, and then the woman responds, just shaking her head. I'll dispel it. I'll get rid of it. Just they shouldn't be holding it, but it's not going to harm the bear. Do you need a hand? Like hmm? Do you need a hand with that? Uh, I will in a minute. Yeah, we we just need to wrap it in cloth, um, and then we can talk about it in lots of other things. I'm sure. Um, but it's it's fine. You, you I didn't scare you too much today. No, no, no. My head is elsewhere. I'm anyway. really sorry, by the way. Like, with the story and everything, I saw the hag on you too, but it's just, we had to track it. I didn't mean for you to get hurt. Bygones. Truly. Bygones. Okay. Well, questions and all that for everybody. Um, and then Kovita, like, is slowly starting to exit the room at this oh. point. Maybe you can help me with this. Yes. I don't know. I pull off the ring. Do you recognize this crest? She squints and... Uh... Shit. One second. <laughs> okay. And rolled... though dump. I rolled a nat 20. <laughs> and that's... Uh... Oh, boy. Hi, DC. One second. One second. Oh, One second. boy. I didn't expect to have this dock open. <laughs> You didn't think we would butcher the dead hag? I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Not really, no. Uh, and then have this level do of... Do you insight. even trust us? I... Mm, mm, yes, I do. But I just don't have all my docks open at all different times. That uh, sounds like failure on your part. <laughs> Brave words. <laughs> um, she stares at it and twists it over a couple times in her hands and then pulls it close, close to her face and her very confused expression, like not upset, not shocked, not anything. And she's like, I, I do recognize it. It's a very old family crest. These are, these are collectibles. Where did you find it? On the hag. On, she on was what part she... of the hag did you find it? On a finger. Oh, you took it. Oh, you took one of its rings. You guys are taking all kinds of stuff, right, Tilda? And she just like gives a pointed look to Matilda, who's like, eh. um. <laughs> first tag. You know, don't know the protocol. Hmm. Hmm. But like, clearly, she was human at one point, and that's important to preserve and honor. I, I suppose so. Uh, what did you want to know about it? Family name and location. Uh. I forget how to pronounce it. They were a very famous family that had a B B R V L. It's V. I can spell it for you. V I L L A R R E A L. Do I recognize that name? Do a history check. It's not good. <laughs> uh, not really an act. In, in, in a, the DC to find out if anybody else is curious in the background, uh, 15 or higher for a history check to have some idea of what this, this name is. I want to do it for Fenzies. Yeah, do it for Fenzies. Mm -hmm. That's why I give it to everybody. Cool. 16. 16? Nice, nice. So 16, you... too. Nice. Uh, Sonny, you're going to roll for this? Or not? Nah. Okay. I so, can't think of an excuse for her to actually know it. Well, that makes sense. <laughs> well, actually, in that case, roll for me, please, because there is a chance. Hmm. Oh. 19. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, just, um, I need to state that I have a really high history score, but I rolled a two. And I, <laughs> I have a history of zero and you rolled 19. I'm still learning, but it's useless. <laughs> it's because your tutor was just so broad in your knowledge. You don't study people, you know. <laughs> Other than gnomes. You're correct. <laughs> We're getting amazing commentary offer from Cameron for that. So what you all know about this family is, I like how like I try to do a character voice, because I'm like, I have to be doing a character voice. Um, what you all know about this family is is 
what Kovita said at, at first, that it is a very old family, and they were primarily known for establishing a lot of the shipping lanes that connected more remote parts of the world. So the crest is something that you typically saw on ships. You'd see it at some of those kind of mail stations, the one that you visited and stuff. And they were just a very integral part of history that kind of has faded away at this point because it's so commonplace now. But the uh, Villarreal family is specifically going to stick in all of your heads for one fact, which is how they left this world or how they like their their last thing that they were really known for. Um, in near the Arctic regions in Akora, there is a small island called Uni. And on Uni, this is where there was a native people there, but the Vareels made their main like settlement there and their boatyards. And they use it as like their point of not only like commanding their fleets, but building their ships. And they also use it as like a nice linking point for everything. Mm -hmm. And about 70 years ago, the island went really quiet out of nowhere. Like all their ports went quiet. You didn't hear about anybody going there. People that went there didn't come back. And eventually, the story goes, they were people that went there found out that they were overran by demons and like otherworldly creatures. It was it was really weird. The stories are like really like big and epic and you know who knows what was actually true about it. But one of the groups that Govita mentioned actually, Hell or High Water, group of heroes from over 70 years ago. There's a lot of statues of them in major cities. They went um to try and end the the invasion, and they were successful. They were never heard from again after that, but the island was left pretty much empty and destroyed. No demons, no otherworldly creatures, none of this family, and none of the original inhabitants. And the, the island's actually just known as the rune, ruins of Uni at this point. You know, the civilization that used to be there, the, the shipbuilding that used to be there. And it's just, yeah. So most of you actually remember this. And one of you actually definitely remembers this. That is not terribly far from home. I sort of remember news reports about that in my early childhood. How old are you? <clears throat> 96. Oh. So, like, still super young. Age of maturity. <laughs> Actually, that's still a couple years off, technically. Oh, okay. Really? Yeah. So, so I'm like, your elder, then. Not... It depends <laughs> on life lived and stage of development, <laughs> but technically, yes. Well, this I is hope a very that weird thing. answers your question, though. It's just, it's very, it's worth a lot of money because of the mysterious circumstances that they vanished under. Hmm. Guess the hag was maybe part of that family. Of the view, I mean. Do you think maybe, like, they got turned into the things that were there? Or that was the start of her dehumanization, where she summoned all of the demons and otherworldly creatures and exchanged her dark and evil power. I think that is. There are a few assumptions there, but maybe. Makes for an excellent story. Wouldn't it just, though? Start writing that, Gaspard. I mean, it used to be one of my favorite stories back in the day. They don't tend to make songs about the Vareels in Hell or High Water. Well, Hell and High Water a little bit more, but that would be a good song if you're the type that sings. Oh, heavens no. <laughs> uh, more of the. Uh actor, not even a playwright, really, to be completely honest. No, um, but I do have a few tack. You should uh, talk to Tilda about that. She's a beautiful dancer. Doesn't typically do it anymore, but uh, she needs to do more shows <laughs> once in a while and get out of the Emporium. And but Tilda's just like... <laughs> I mean, you oh, are a good me. dancer. I thought I sensed some sort of artistic flair about her. <laughs> Kovita kind of chuckles and snaps her book shut um, and she begins to continue to walk out unless anybody stops her. Okay. No. She gets to the door um, and well she takes a detour on the way to the door and kind of makes sure that she walks past Matilda and she she leans over to her and looks at her like the way that like a, an old friend with a bit of like a mother would look at someone especially because she has to look down at her now. <laughs> uh, Kovita is about 5'8". Um, and she doesn't whisper anything so you all hear it, but she just looks at her and kind of smiles and goes, I'm really glad you're okay. And your horns are very beautiful. And then she just turns and walks away and stops at the door and goes, well, 
as I said, uh, our barracks are your barracks for the foreseeable future. I am up in the main keep, as are all of my lieutenants. Uh, the guard will stay for now, but you can leave and go as you, as you please, unless the city comes under attack, which I hope it does not. The gate remains open and you may go uh, as you please, but I will see you tomorrow in mm-hmm. proper hours. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Have a good night. And she turns around and walks away. Um, Sonny just smirks and is like, I told you they were nice horns. <laughs> Matilda? Yes. <laughs> she like glares back at you. What do you mean? Who's nice? I said you had nice horns. Oh, the, oh, that's what you say. Ah, thanks, Sonny. <laughs> and she puts her arms up over the horns for a moment and she just like looks around at everybody. And no, we're not going to end there just yet. She she has her she has her arms up over the horns, and she like looks around at everybody, looks at the hagstone again, and focuses on that instead. Can we get um actually can we get bed sheets or something and, and crack that up really fast? Yes, I <laughs> reach for my cloak that I put over her, yeah. which is magical, and it's like I think that will work. And she looks it over. Are you sure? I just don't want it to get marred or anything. Oh, it's been through hell, trust me. All right. <laughs> and she just kind of whips it over the, the hagstone and rolls it up and kicks it into a corner. It's probably fine. It's just, it has hag magic in it, and I didn't want it to break open and hurt you or something like that. Um, it's technically probably the thing that let her do what she did to your brain. Interesting. What is hag magic? Evil. Act. That's the best way. I mean, of course, it's more technical than that, but it's a bit of fey, it's a bit of arcane, it's a bit of... I don't even really know how to explain it in human words. But hags are... They use a lot of body magic. They do a lot of things with torture and rituals that you shouldn't do, and they use things like ghoul dust. Um, so in that stone... it. I know it takes about 30 to 45 days to make one, and you have to sacrifice about 15 people. So. Do you have, like, a bunch of people killed recently? What? Well, I mean, the hag, right? So 15 people had to oh, be sacrificed to... to, to, to or do me... you think the hag is really old? Oh, I mean, the, probably they probably well, had that for a very long time. Yeah, I had to, like, sort of thing. cut the ring off of her. It mm. was embedded. So, like, that island, if they had been on that island, that would have been a good place to kill 15 people. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of places to kill 15 people, but I'm assuming that the Hag had it for a long time. Um, but we can we can probably... You still have the Dispel wand? Uh, Gaspard has it. Yes. Okay. Well, that combined with some of the magic in this room between all of you, I'm confident we can handle it. Um, Do you need to sit down? Yes. And she just <laughs> sits down on the floor. <laughs> exactly. She just collapses and fits. Huh. <sighs> I'm assuming y'all have questions? Yes, when in the time period of Gaspard having stuff eaten and then you going to chase the hag, when did you see Matilda dance? Like, we didn't have a performance. (laughs) I feel like that's a personal question. question. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just wondering, and we're in the, like, it's- Why are you so nosy? It's- it's We're friends. (laughs) What? I- (laughs) Mm. It just, it, sorry, that's not the most important part of what happened. We, so we, were just, we were working on that stopwatch upstairs because I couldn't sleep and Tilda was working on it. And I tried using it and I went back a few hours and saw something she did not expect me to see. Oh, okay. That makes sense. <laughs> I, I, I yeah. figured that was... <laughs> Okay. Dance, dancing and yeah. Thank you, by the way, for saving our lives uh, you're welcome i um hey yeah. tony's just gonna sit on the floor with her she's <laughs> gonna immediately re- reach over and like take her hand um you're welcome i didn't expect to i didn't expect to live but honestly it seemed like a, a sacrifice worth making um that thing that i did it typically kills things so it was a risk of i was hoping that i could just rip it apart and it would be done, and then I could have a healing potion or healing or something like that. I the few times I've had to or had to use it, I've never encountered resistance like that, and that was terrifying. And the magic in that thing was like I know what a hag is, and I know about the magic, but it was a lot. And I'm so happy you were there. If I tried that by myself, 
it would have just outlasted me and then ate me or did something with me. So, did you use that on a giant once? Yeah. I, How'd you know that? I think I saw that too. Yeah. What do you mean? It's. I. When did, you were. I mean, I, I may have seen that as well. How would. What do you mean? You saw it. That was. I, you were kind of coming apart in the alley, and I think the three of us were in contact with you. And you saw parts of my life? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh. I yeah. mean, seems like you're doing well. I mean, I am in this... You know, I've just died, but uh, in these current moments, Weez and Sonny's hands really tight, mm -hmm. I... I'm doing decently, yeah. Um, well, that means there's use. I don't know what you saw then if you saw the giant, but yeah, I, I, um, I killed the giant with it once, and if you saw it, you know how easy it was. Mm -hmm. Ridiculously so in that case. So I wasn't expecting the hag to be such a fight. So mm -hmm. I'm glad you were all there and it was a team effort. And if I died, sorry, the whole reason I was saying this, if I died, it, it would have been worth it. But you're welcome. Thank you for fighting that. And getting me out of... You saved me, Sonny said. Yes, I'm glad I did. How did you do that? What did you do? Was it king? Like, what, what, changeling? Do, do you want to just show her? Mm. Yes, sure. And I turn into a uh, older figure familiar to my character. Um... <sighs> Yep, really? Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. Okay. Uh-oh. Okay. Right. Oh. And um, as this older man um, stands before her, I uh, go, yes, I'm very glad that I saved you. And she kind of blinks, looking really confused, and goes, uh, wait, are, are you not Gaspard? Are you Gio Giovanni? No. I'm very, very eager to learn any information about it. And we'll find out more next week. Oh, -ho. <laughs> I think that's a perfect stopping point I was just given. Um, so thank you for that. I have been dying for the past, like, 30 minutes. <laughs> I, I, as soon as I said the name, I watched you tense and then go dead silent until someone tried to talk to you. <laughs> and, uh, until half pint was like, that's far, and you're just like, mm, okay. Uh -huh, what? I'm distracted. <laughs> yep, I'm distracted. So yeah, we'll go ahead and leave off there. Um, Hey, we went a little bit over tonight. Um, so thank you for the players for waiting waiting uh, for us to go a little bit over and get to the end. Um, if you're watching in the audience, thank you for sticking with us. And if you're one of the longtime people watching us, thank you for all the support. If you're somebody new that found us, uh, welcome to Mythical Family. Welcome to Prismatic Dragonfly. We hope you're, you're going to stick around for more to see what's happening on this crazy adventure. We will be back next Sunday at 7.30 p.m. PST. And in the meantime, if you haven't, and you're especially new um, or old and just haven't got around to it yet, please join us on our Discord, Twitter, Instagram, all our socials, especially Discord. There's a lot of, like, great jokes and memes and dad jokes in there and stuff. But um, <laughs> it was for a lot of things. Somebody put a bunch of shark emojis on it. <laughs> yes. Join the before shark emoji. Yeah. There will be there will be exclusive shark content next week when you tune in if you come back. That's all I can promise. You. And that's not a joke. The first thing that you see on the stream will be shark related. But shark on onesie. that, everybody have... gets a shark onesie. Yes, maybe it's a shark onesie. You never know. We will all be dressed as sharks. All, all dressed. As... Yes, that's... like Katy Perry shark. Yes. Yeah, we're all gonna. So the plan is where we get here like an hour before Vale can get here, and we're all just gonna be wearing shark onesies, and then Vale's gonna walk in and be like, hmm. Baby shark. Perfect. <laughs> but yeah, so thank you again for joining us. Have an amazing night and an excellent week, and we'll see you next time on the Prismatic Dragon Club. Have a good night. <laughs>